off. Uptown TV looking at the mirror, yo, who this? Uptown TV this? With the maddest and the baddest review, now nah, miss. Need some self time, so we need it. Looking how we are, we are the realest. Bruh, for one being a representing a man for Uptown TV. You understand? Unparalleled in the history of the world, we ask these ancestors who built the pyramids, who built the temples, to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. We ask these African ancestors who took this African culture and extended it throughout Africa, building the stone cities of Zimbabwe, building the empires of the Sudan, Ghana, Mali, and Sangai, building the Swahili city-states along the east coast of Africa, and in Christian Africa, asking King Lalibela and giving him the courage to build the 12 churches of Lalibela from the ground down, monuments to the world. We ask these Africans to spread this culture to the Dogo and to the Akan and to the Yoruba and to the Bankongo and to the Zulu. We ask these Africans to be with us, to strengthen us and give us a vision for the future. In the name of the Africans who opened up Africa, opened up the Nile Valley to other cultures and other peoples and they came in and nurtured themselves on the African greatness. First coming in early were the ancient Hebrews and they synthesized this culture and produced Judaism. Later coming in were the Christians and they synthesized this culture and produced Christianity. Coming in were also the Greeks who took the African culture, synthesized it and produced Greek civilization. And then later the Prophet Muhammad and with the Arabs coming into the Nile Valley, they synthesized the culture and produced Islam. We ask these African ancestors who as part of their legacy laid the foundations for Judaism, Christianity, Islam and Greek civilization to be with us, to strengthen us and give us a vision for the future. We ask those African ancestors pulled out of Africa, taken to the hells of North America, South America, the Caribbean, maintaining the spirit of African humanity in their hearts and in their minds, and who left us this enormous legacy of struggle. We ask those Africans who resisted enslavement in the villages of Africa, who resisted enslavement in the shores of Africa, who resisted enslavement in those forts and dungeons, who resisted enslavement in the holes of those ships, who resisted enslavement when they arrived on these shores in the New World. We ask these Africans who ran into the highlands of Northeast Brazil and established for 100 years the first free republic in the Americas, the Republic of Palmares, and their last great leader, Zumbi, who speared and sacrificed. We ask these Africans who replicated the Brazilian experience and went into the highlands of Jamaica and became the maroon free communities. We ask these Africans who went into the backwoods of the Guyanas and Suriname and created free republic of the Suramaka and the Ajuka. We ask these Africans who went into the backwoods of Georgia and the swamps of Florida and moved with the Seminole Indians and resisted oppression. We ask these Africans who left us a legacy of struggle and resistance, the likes of which no one in the world has to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. We ask these Africans who created and laid for us a foundation of struggle and resistance that was passed on generation after generation that was passed on to Harriet Tubman, who fought away out of enslavement and became a symbol of freedom for all of us. Similarly, Frederick Douglass and hundreds of thousands of others fought their way out of enslavement. We ask those Africans who went with Bookman Dessaline to create the greatest revolutionary experience in the history of the world, the Haitian Revolution, leaving us a legacy, the likes of which no one else has had. We ask these Africans to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. Let us start our class with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Larry Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, our Guru, Guru. Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, Saints of all religions, religions. we bow to all of you. you. Heavenly Father, Father. Divine Mother, Mother. Great Great Gurus, gurus. receive our love, love. receive our desire. To love you more, to attune our hearts and minds with your great presence. Om.
is games they are playing it's a games they are playing and they've got us all looking in this direction we're looking in that direction they tell us to look there and we look there they point there and we look there and they want us to forget that the war that Israel is is losing against the pride against the Palestinian kind sister Maxine Sto on and about Rastafari month some of the Activities that are scheduled for Rastafari Month. Uh, Prophet Greg, as you know. Uh, bless and love and greet is Sister Kabu. Greetings. Um, you know, I always greet in the name of the most time, Prior Islasia, Rastafari, and give thanks to be here. And also greetings to our listeners and nice. the IRFM. Give thanks. Sister Maxine, you there? No, we're not hearing Maxine. All right. Uh, not quite sure uh, what's happening, Prophet Greg. Do you know? Um, um, yeah. um uh, you she said you're should, to Yes, she's yeah. anticipating the call as well. So yeah. I'm hoping that um, things are flowing. All right. So um, the call should have been conferenced, but I think it's not conferenced. So let me let me ask you to hang up, and then we can just do this again. So I can uh, uh, conference both of you. So hang up for me, Greg. All right. Thanks. I detected that to me. And the quote I found so interesting, Obiami but not enslave me. Obiami but not enslave me. We're going to talk about the need to repeal the Obia laws in Jamaica. And uh, uh, we're going to have a, an extended conversation on that because we're speaking with attorney at law, Bert Samuels first. And then uh, after that, we're going to be speaking with... Uh, Mile, uh, Mile Priest, uh, Alex Moore Minot and High Priest Akiva Israel. And we'll tell you more about that. Let me go back to the phone lines. All right. So I do think that I have online now Sister Maxine Stowe. Maxine. Yes, blessed love. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> greetings, 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 Maxine. Greetings. greetings. Thank you so much, both of you, uh, for, for coming on this morning to talk about Rastafari. I remember when you first raised this, you know, Maxine, it was a while ago, wasn't it? That April yes. should be recognized as Rastafari month and that you were going out, um, to, to, to as part of the, the leadership of this process. That was how long ago? Uh, well, this is the eighth annual activation of the month. Mm-hmm. It, it was inspired by the um, a couple of things. In 2016, there was the 50th anniversary of the visit of mm-hmm. His Imperial Majesty um, to Jamaica uh, in April 21st, 1966. And that was uh, both a community and um, government-led um, celebration, mm-hmm. which that highlight, you know, um, inspired us to continue that high level of um, uh, exposure and also, you know, a month, as you know, the United Nations and um, national societies will um, develop days and our months to continue to raise the the, um, focus on particular issues that require that. You know what I mean? Like you'd have autism month or um, breast cancer month. Alzheimer's you know? month and so on. Alzheimer's, yes. right. So this, is, so this think- is something that is done. And also here on the island, um, we have uh, different, we feature different things at different times. So this is something that nations and, and, and the globe, globally is done. Um, for Rastafari, um, the initiative was always, always a very, very good initiative. But, but the, 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 the thing that I've noticed is that, um, it, it hasn't, well, you tell me, has it caught on? Because I'm, I'm getting the impression that it's still taking a while before it's caught on by not just the Rastafari community, but understood uh, in, 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 in across Jamaica, but also among um, the politicians and in Parliament, and you know, as they would recognize other things. Well, interestingly, um, the month was immediately acknowledged and recognized by the, the state. The issue has been really from the community understanding mm-hmm. of the month because. Okay. The state actually, um, and Minister of Culture and the various um, organizations under her uh, mandate 
has actually accepted the month. You know, it was presented to the Prime Minister, Governor General, mm -hmm. and the Minister of Culture. And actually, it was a core um, activity that was presented within the UNESCO um, Reggae Inscription Forum as to the state's um, potential uh, collaboration with the community, which they built again off of the 50th anniversary um, visit. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's mature and accepted within the state, especially that, you know, Reggae Month um, kind of eclipses Black History Month, right? Yes. And so there's not a lot of um, uh, platforming for the rest of our community and Black History in general within um, February. So it yeah. also naturally was attractive Mm -hmm. to be so closely aligned with reggae month you know what i mean yes. like it's almost right after and and and, and why why is why is uh now before i go to prophet greg to talk about what's what's going to be featured this month but so why is april and why why april why why did the um millennium council uh, led by yourself and prophet greg and others looked at april as the most um fitting well, out Right outside of the, um, the 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 visit, which you know is a, is a major um, platform for the community, Groundation Day, mm -hmm. we have the um, Abib. April is the first month in the Gregorian, you know, Ethiopian mm -hmm. um, calendar. Um, April second was Rastafari um, Haile Selassie's ascension day to the to be the emperor, even though the coronation was in um, November, it was actually April 2nd that that day, you know, mm -hmm. and the import of his, his ascension. April 3rd was um, her imperial majesty, Empress Menin Earthstrong, which is a major, you know, platform for um, educating people about the role of the woman mm -hmm. in Rastafari and, you know, just the whole balance. Yes. Um, April 12th was the Coral Garden Bad Friday Day in 1963. It falls different days, you know, in March. Well, what, 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 falls dif what falls on different days is really Easter Monday or Good Friday or Bad Friday. Bad um, Friday, as exactly. A case, as a case might be. And I, mm -hmm. I, 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 I questioned um, myself many times over the years looking at Bad Friday and the Coral Gardens massacre as to whether or not it would make more sense to um, keep the day, the exact date, which is April 12th, to keep that date as opposed to checking it, moving it around also with the idea of, um, of, right. the, of, of the Christian calendar. But, but anyway, so, so that, that's an aside, and I think it's something that maybe the rest of our community will have to, to, to look right. at again. All right so, right, so, so, so many things, including, of course, the, the 21st, which you highlighted, um, highlighted, and then yes. obviously, April um, 15th was the gazetting of the Ganja Sacramento Law. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the first times we are um, identified within law in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, the 20th is World Ganja Day. You know, mm -hmm. because of the 15th, the 20th has higher appeal, mm -hmm. you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to um, advocate. And April 22nd, One Love Peace Concert. Um, you know, one's don't understand that it was the rest of our community that was leading the, the, the negotiations for that concert mm -hmm. linked to the April 21st, um, you know, Groundation mm -hmm. Day Energy. Mm -hmm. And with the Bob Marley One Love movie, it is important, you know, yes. for the community to understand their role mm -hmm. in, um, in that concert. And as you know, Reggae Month was anchored around um, Bob Marley's birthday, and we had the significant birthday of Bunny Whaler. Well, I, 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 I can't let you get away with that since Reggae Month was, <laughs> Reggae, since the idea for Reggae Month came out of my brain. <laughs> And, 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 and yes, I led that process here from Area Firm, and I'm not going to I'm not going to give it up. You know that that's my intellectual property. Um, so, so it wasn't it wasn't around Bob Marley really. It was um, two people. It, it, it included also um, the because we have a, we have the first of February, we had mm -hmm. we had the sixth of February, but we mm -hmm. also had um, quite a few more activities that we were doing 
um, as part of the month as IRA FM, which we were doing for many, many years, um, which was yes. our, our Black History Month activities that had um, a reggae foundation. And because of that, we carried that idea to Nana Rita Marley, and then she with us carried it to Babsy Grange. That is how it go. Please to write it down. All right, let me let me let me take a quick <laughs> let me take a quick break and come back and find out what's what's gonna happen for the month. Maxine for the, for the month, here we are, all the way to the fourteenth. Uh, so that let's pick up from there. What else? Well you can do a quick recap of what's gone already and then what's coming up. Well the 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 ninth and the tenth, um the ninth was to um review the actual coral gardens um massacre. Um, and the tent now was actually an interview as a pre-interview for the third session of the Permanent Forum of People of African Descent. And we got Dr. Barbara Renners, um, who is the chair for, for the UN Working um, Group, to give a, a special presentation. So that's basically what went down um, in, um, uh, on the beginning, the, the, the seventh we did a overview similar to what Sister Maxine um, doing, um, recapping the, the the essence of what Rastafari um, um, month is all about, mm-hmm. and then we move straight into it. So we are now in the second week, which is uh, we actually started um, the recap and the refocus of our eighth anniversary mm-hmm. uh, um, on the seventh. Yes. So we we generally this this forum are are, are I mean are all Zoom forums. Mm-hmm. And we are looking to host them, um, myself and Sister Maxine as co-hosts um, between Sundays and Wednesdays. Okay. So um, the, these are only the, the, the dates, the four dates that we are accommodating in the Zoom. So like for for today, you know, the 14th and the 15th, I should say, it's really the, about the Ganja. Um, these are Ganja forums. Today we look at the local industry and the impact. Um, tomorrow we look um, at the wider regional and international settings um, uh, where our speakers, presenters will go um, in, mo- in, de- in depth of what is really impacting the, the rest of, um, rather the ganja industry, cannabis yeah. industry, as well as the um, proposal to, to further look into the developments and how to um, impact changes in moving it, it forward. Seem, so, it, it seems to me that we have done that a lot, um, Prophet Greg. The, the, uh, in terms of talking about ganja and the ganja industry and the um, what's yes. happening now with the decriminalization and so on. It seems to me as if we've had a lot of talk about what is happening, how it is happening, and what we need to do to ensure that we're part of it. Haven't we come past that yet? Where, where are we in the process? No, I think this phase where we're at now, working with the Ganja Growers and Producers Association of, of Jamaica, which basically is, is the largest block of stakeholders um, looking to impact change. Um, the, there's a seven-point um, outline in what we are moving forward to galvanize the, the, the stakeholder support um, and, and put in a definitive um, response to the government because obviously you will probably be aware of some task force that was set up by Dr. Dunn, the state minister, and that was shelved because of the new uh, Minister of um, Investment uh, and Commerce. Um, um, so we have to basically go back to uh, the join board to see how we can, this time, move more aggressively towards changes and okay. uh, maybe end up with litigation. Um, this, is, this is a serious move that is going to be made. And I, I do agree with you that this is... This is, this is, this is, this is yeah. the po- I think we should be at the point now, Sister Maxine, where we're saying to ourselves, who do you think you are? And, <laughs> and, and to just, what are we litigate? Are we any other gate? But we're supposed to gate this thing. Because exactly. it's, it seems to me as if, you know, th- this whole process take rest of a fool. This is just basically what I'm saying. It is... It is a, a, a situation that is egregious to me that, and I can't even begin to understand why it is that there isn't more a, a demand from Rastafari for, 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 for this change instead of just talking. But, 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 my, but I'm observing that the politicians are very close now to Rastafari. And, I, and to me, politicians are beginning to lead that process, any kind of process within Rastafari, and expecting an applaud uh, um, for it. 
Yes, yes. Well, I think, too, that the um, the issue for Rastafari is also the issue for the, um, the, the Jamaican people. Because the Jamaican industry itself is 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 not. I disagree big. with you, Maxine. Because the Jamaican people were always against ganja, whether it is the producing of ganja or the smoking of ganja or the use of ganja. Um, the Jamaican people on mass have been against that. It is Rastafari who have kept marijuana, ganja, um, in at the forefront, who are, who are always uh, consistent about the medicinal and all other kinds of uses. At the expense of their freedom, their their lives, their livelihoods, and their and their children and their families, so it is it is a Rastafari issue no, no, at, I, at the I, core. Yeah, I understand what you I appreciate what you're saying. What what is necessary because when you look at the use of ganja and the consumption of ganja in Jamaica, when I refer to the Jamaican people, is that it, it may be promoted um, by the society that it is against it. But the, the mass of people that actually consume ganja in Jamaica and is integrated into their lives is a large, you know, That is no, that is no. You know, I mean, we're born and grow, yeah? That is no, Maxine, because, you know, when I had dengue fever and we had to get some green ganja for putting us some stuff for cure my ganja fever, fe- my, my, my dengue fever, it had to be whispered. And that was in the entire community and that replicated across Jamaica. And, and hence Coral Gardens. I mean, even Coral, the Coral, Coral Gardens massacre was also tied um, to the well, use of uh, consumption of ganja. This morning about obia and and various traditional um, uh, retentions that we have had that have been criminalized, um, you know, which falls into this whole yes uh, negativity towards the ganja. Yes, you understand. Yes, and, so, and I'm not even talking about. This. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm not talking about the negativity so much as to say that. You know, um, there, there's a, there seems to be on the island within the, 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 the halls of the synagogue of Satan or wherever else that they're making laws, um, to deliberately, um, keep out some people, especially Rastafari, out of how this thing is progressing. This is just me looking on, but because we were no. totally out of, out of time. Let, okay. So, so who's on the panel for? For, for the days. And, and what are the days? Because, um, Prophet Greg, you said, um, between Sunday and Wednesday, is it for those, all those days or just a few days, um, beginning today? Well, continuing today in, mm-hmm. into, into when? Well, it, it, it goes to, to, to the end of April, the, the church. But as I said before, the focus... No, I'm talking about the Zoom, the Zoom meeting for today. Yeah, man, all, all the Zoom meeting for today would be, um, as I said, on January the 4th. It's Sunday the, to Wednesday. Sunday to Wednesday, but today today and tomorrow would focus on Ganja. Okay. Um, the panelists, um, as you were asking, is, like I said, the, 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 from the GGPAG, the executive, we will have um, speakers like Vicky Hansen, Maurice... Um, Maurice Ellis, um, uh, speaking on the, the whole scenario of the seven points that are developing. Mm-hmm. So um, it will be really focused around um, that situation. We have Dr. Machel Emmanuel, who is looking at the genetics of the whole ganja um, plant itself. He would be also as one of the main, main speakers. And of course, you know, as a Zoom, it will be um, open to question and answer. That's basically overviewing. Um, Ras Jutta uh, also, as a part of the executive, looking at the scenario of how Westmoreland is being impacted on the, um, the, the whole community um, surrounding the whole Ganja in, in, in commerce and industry in, in Westmoreland as how he can probably relate to it mm-hmm. as one who is familiar with the Western development. Mm-hmm. So um, these are the, the major points that is going to come across mm-hmm. for the next um, for tomorrow, Monday, the international setting, we have um, Ms. Annette Henry, who is going to focus on what is developing regionally mm-hmm. um, in regards to the impact um, going as far even into Colombia, mm-hmm. where the Ganja, um, uh, what you call it now, regional integration is concerned and what is being developed. I don't know really much about that, so I'm very interested to see what is going to happen. I think an announcement is going to be making. Um, from that um, settings on 420, we have Ras Tauta from South Africa. We, we are looking to engage Ras Aya from St. Kitts and Nevis 
mm-hmm. who is going to focus on a case study that um, that was victorious for, for the Rastafari sacramental usage. Mm-hmm. So that is also a good looking to what this case study can aid in mm-hmm. us going forward with litigation. So um, Matt, Dr. Machel um, is also going to be um, another presenter on, on, on Monday. And of course, our, our, um, Sister Maxine is going to look at the foundation of the Rasta Ganja Global settings and both um, today and tomorrow how it has impacted into South Africa. Mm-hmm. So um, obviously the, the, the Zoom is going to be open to other ones. We have the potential of Rasamukai coming on from Botswana mm-hmm. to discuss that as well okay. um, within the whole international free. Mm-hmm. And of course we can't leave out Ras Billy Reynolds who mm-hmm. will as an international figure and, and well versed in the the, 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 the crisscrossing of, of regional into international sphere. Hopefully we, we will get him to divulge much information and on onto the international scene and kick things off. Mm-hmm. So that's basically the Ganja Forum in okay. essence. How does one and, how do... and we, I just wanted um Kabu to to note that all of this is grounded at um, judgment Yard um, Tabernacle, mm-hmm. um, led by um, Sisla Kalonji, which is Earth Strong, is on April 17th, 17th. Wednesday, mm-hmm. um, focused on um, repatriation with reparation, mm-hmm. which ties heavily into the permanent forum mm-hmm. on people of African descent, which is the 16th to the 19th. So all, right, we'll brilliant. Be so all of the all of the all of the Zoom sessions will be coming from Judgment Yard. Yes, yes, okay. the whole quartering of it sounds there. good. Yeah, brilliant. Right. Sounds good. You know? And and they will all be recorded. Mm. Okay, great. And represented so, as well. And represented mm. as well. What time do they start today, for example? Well, on Sunday on, it's from yeah. three to six, and Monday to uh, Wednesday it's from six to nine p.m. Mm-hmm. And it is a recurring um, event. So everyone just plugs in. It, you know, you don't need the passcode. Um, okay, you know. okay, okay, okay. Right, yeah. So, what, yeah, so how do you how do you plug in? How um, do you join? The, the it's the it's the, the meeting uh, ID. You need the meeting ID at least, right? Yes, the meeting right. ID. Um, do you have that quickly? Oh, I have. Okay, eight seven three two eight two zero. Five one one three. So that's no. It. Actually, we we created um, Boba Greg the oh. uh, the continuing ID because we realized. Oh, so it's not this. So scrap this. So, so, so listen, scrap this. This is not it. No, that's not it. Okay, it's, uh, go, mm-hmm, go ahead. All right. So the the, the new ID link uh, because um, how we were engaging the the um, United Nations Forum for for descendants of African. Uh, yes. of African descendants. Yes. So we, we, we set a new link um, from there on to be the new ID is 330-788-2217. Say that again. 330-788-2217. All right. So, um, uh, write that down, please. And uh, uh, this is a Zoom link for today, and it's recurring. So, once you plug that in, that's going to be it for the sessions, the Zoom sessions over the next few days. And uh, so, today from three p three p.m. to six p.m., and then um, for for Monday to Wednesday, six p.m. to nine p.m. I got that right, okay? And then, yes. and then there's another one on the twenty first. Yeah, the 21st yes. to the 24th. Okay. And then the 28th to the 30th. I suppose there's going to be some... So when the Bingy and so on start, leading for into the 21st? Well, is it part there, of the... There's, there's, a bingy, uh, there's a, um ongoing Bingy at Judgment Yard that starts okay. on the 29th. So there's a constant um, activity there. So the Bingy and is at Judgment Yard going on from March? Into yeah, from March 29th, that was the Coral Gardens. Uh, so, I mean, I forgot to come on Judgment Yard then because me, 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 me need to come. All right, so t- March 21. <laughs> I think I might come on Judgment Yard March 21. All right, because I need to. April, yeah. April. Sorry, April 21. April, April 21. April. April 21. But I, I, I yeah. must mention also um, the event at Mama Fire because I heard I will be there to um, honor the 70th um, Earth Song of Mama Fire. 
Oh, yes, brilliant. So that's happening. Yes, that's so happening. So we want to plug that in in some way and, and look at also activities done by Harambe, Harambe um, House of Siva what, what on, the 20, is, what on, is, the 20, on the 28th. Okay. So Harambe mm-hmm. it would be done by um, House of Siva on right. the 28th to see mm-hmm. how we can plug in activities and, and look to see how what we can uh, accomplish within the, the setting in recognizing Mama. Mama Fire as well with, with for her Earth Strong. So these are developed, and, and we are hoping to get a UNESCO yes. um, discussion on on pro- perhaps the twenty ninth okay. of of April um, um, from the, the well, from as, the headquarters. As you get so, them, just please let me know so we can share them here. Thank you both. Thank you, Sister Maxine. Thank you, Prophet Greg. I'll <laughs> see you on the twenty first, inshallah. All Thank right, you so and, much. Uh, give thanks, sis, um, um, Sister Kabu. All right. Of the program, we're going to be speaking with Pan African Attorney at Law, uh, Bert Samuels. And usually, uh, we take Bert for, for granted, Ronnie, we must stop doing it. So let me, let me go right ahead. And for those who do not know, because we always just say Pan African Attorney at Law and leave it at that. So this morning, I'm going to do a little longer introduction. Uh, Bert has been practicing law in Jamaica for more than 40 years and is currently partner and head of litigation with the firm Knight, Junior and Samuels. His career began after graduation from the University of the West Indies and the Norman Manley Law School. And his areas of practice have centered on industrial relations and civil and criminal litigation. He's a former member of the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council of Jamaica and is a frequent presenter for continuing legal education seminars with that body. Of course, you know that our brother is a passionate Pan-African. He continues to advocate for changes to inherited colonial uh, laws and acts and so on with a view to further liberating post-slavery Jamaica. After 12 years as a member, he now serves as a deputy, deputy chairman of the National Council on Reparation and leads their legal working group. In addition to his legal work, Bert Samuels is also recognized um, a recognized writer and a social commentator. He's a playwright, as you know. His works include the play The Trial, of Governor Eyre. I don't have to tell you a whole lot about that. He recently contributed a chapter to the upcoming publication, Time for Reparations, published by Harvard University, in which he outlined a strong case for Jamaica's claim. In 2021, Bert was appointed to serve as one of the 12 commissioners who presided over the International Commission of Inquiry on Systematic Racist Police Violence Against People of African Descent. In the United States. I'm very happy to welcome to the program my brother, my friend, Bert Samuels. <laughs> yes, I could ask for more. Exactly. The only thing I would add is that I become an elder on the 22nd of May next month. I turn 70. So I'm moving into eldership. And, you know? <laughs> and you know, and you know, in our African tradition, you yeah. um, tw- you can be twelve and be an elder. It is all the ancestors' work, you know. So you don't okay. have to do it. You don't have to do it. So, 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 so we know you young. We know you seventy, right? We know we <laughs> we know you youth elder. Thank you for that intro. Thank you. I yes, feel humbled, yes. you know. Yes. And um, when you said again, inherited, colonial inherited laws. I think yeah. that's what we're going to hit this morning. Exactly. <laughs> I loved it when I said to you, when you wrote me back to say, obia yes. me, but not enslave me, because we want to yes. talk about the obia laws, and we want to talk yes. about um, the, the need to repeal that, to repeal the, yes. the obia act. But but that's a quote you sent to me. You put it in quotations, you never tell me who said, but it resonated with me. I'm going to say, I'm going to hit you with it this morning, you know, and this is yeah, what I'm going to call are, the those program. Those were my words. That those are the your... words of Bert Thomas. Um, obia me, but not enslave me. Because what wow. happened is, Yes. Or enslavers made us hate our tradition, and we were there joining them, sometimes hating it, whereas we were enslaved. So my story to the Jamaican people this morning, obey me any day, but don't enslave me. And this is, okay. and, and we want to pull that apart now because people are so, 
um, afraid. They have done such a number on us that we are afraid of some of the yeah. the, the words that yeah. um, or words that come out of our own language, of our own culture, and even yeah. the meaning of the words have been hidden from us. So. Yeah. So, Bert, I know we're going to talk about the legal aspect, but I want to walk back with you just a little in terms yeah. of looking at um, what the, the how, how legislation and uh, 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 these laws developed over time and why they developed. Um, maybe going back to, obviously, we're looking at the slave plantation and, and how our African ancestors were enslaved. What, yeah. what, what were some of the main reasons you think for, or, uh, for your research has shown as, as, as a Pan-African attorney at law for some of these, um, laws and acts that came out that developed over time? Well, one thing is when we brought our religion from, uh, Africa, it was brought in chains, eh? Mm-hmm. We were in chains and put on the ships and placed there. We didn't just arrive here without our own beliefs and the Obia comes from a god in the West Africa called Obi, Obi. Mm-hmm. And therefore it was just, you know, as it were, changed because it was adulterated with English and Obia. And therefore that belief system caused us to be able to withstand and feel proud that we could, you know, conquer Massa. So once he found that we had a system of belief that could compete with him and try to conquer him, he was at first afraid of us because he saw that the belief system was so endemic, it was so embedded in us that they didn't want us to believe anything that they didn't understand. So they put a white Jesus in front of us and say, worship him instead of your traditional beliefs. Mm-hmm. And that is why, you know, they wanted us to say we will have glory, up in glory, we're going to get our reward. So the mm-hmm. Obia mm-hmm. would want us to get it here and now. Mm-hmm. The, their mm-hmm. Christianity, version of Christianity is that we will get our rewards elsewhere and, you know, we were cursed to mm-hmm. be black. Mm-hmm. So it's all, you know, trying to enslave our minds. Mm-hmm. I know, I know, um, Bert, that um, the and, and uh, the, this is interesting because we we we're talking about uh, in this space for many years even the colonial law that allows um, government to yeah. to strip us of of right to access right to beaches and so on. There are so many colonial yeah. laws that are still on the book. The the yeah. laws regarding Obia they are more than just within that that period of. Um, colonization but it's, in other words i'm saying it's post emancipation that that yep. that and, and pre emancipation so they came out of a, a necessity yeah and so and so what what would have led the colonizers and the enslavers to yep. draft these draconian cruel and wicked laws um, yeah. not to, to discuss them in Parliament, and then which they did to discuss them among themselves, and then to make them into into laws. Yeah. So the first thing they did was to demonize the beliefs, it make it say that the Obia man who was practicing herbal medicine, who you could go to as a uh, you know he could encourage you, is just like a therapist. Mm-hmm. What they did, they demonized that section of us. And can you imagine? Us during slavery, we wanted something to believe in. I mean, slavery was so hard and so... Half of the people were getting crazy. So we needed a belief system. We needed therapy. And they moved the therapists out of our system, out of the society, and say that they were believing in witchcraft and all Obia dead. It was evil and how you're going to kill other people. Mm -hmm. When what these Obia men were, they were bush doctors. They were able to give therapy, to give counseling to you. They didn't want us to get it from that system. They wanted us to get it from their warped, traditional Christian system. That is, Mm -hmm. we should believe in a white Jesus who would take care of us, not now, but later. So it is all part of that brainwashing, Mm -hmm. that anything that was African was not good. The drum was banned. The abeng was banned. Everything that we wish to communicate. The practices as uh, uh, banned, the religious practices, the spiritual um, practices, and also, of course, words were banned. Uh, and yeah. this, is, this is pretty interesting. So, so then you've been looking at this for some time, Bert, and I know you yeah. have a uh, um, special interest in that. Um, so, so this has been coming from the time of slavery all the way to today. As an attorney, do you find that 
for want of a better word, fascinating, phenomenal that we have a law like this on the books that but still remains on the books today? As a lawyer, I'm ashamed to tell you that we're straddling colonialism. We are embracing it because when you want to be the best lawyer, they call you the king's counsel. You're Charles's boy. So when you reach the pinnacle of my profession, you get KC, which is king's counsel. And that king is King Charles in England. Goodness you're gracious supposed, me. Yeah. You're supposed to work for him. You take a pledge when you become king's counsel that you will work for the king for free and you will not do any matters against him. That's what the King's Council in Jamaica, they have taken that pledge. So, and when they open the courts in Jamaica tomorrow morning, all people will rise and they say, God save the king. So if you're thinking that it is just Obia that is colonial, we're talking about lawyers accepting colonial titles and the Jamaican courts being opened every morning by saying, God save King Charles. Every morning. Uh, that explains morning. that explains then why so many colonial laws remain on the yes. book because um, yes. there are many among us who yes. should be leading and those the lawyers move yes. into parliament. Eh? Yes, they go yes. to parliament, so they are not offended by these laws. And I'm telling you that. Yes, I, I'm I'm a single voice crying out in the court when they say God save the king. I say fire bond. You know those yes. things are what I continue to say. Because yeah. I fire a bond, Charles, you know? Of course. And I'm not afraid to say No, you know? no, not at all. But so, so here's the thing. Um, you've been looking at the laws. What, the, the, how much have they changed, if any, since the 1600s, 1690, whenever? All because right. these uh, have been so, on the books for a while. Let, let your listeners hear this. So the, yes. the Obia law was codified. I mean, they were against Obia from day one. Yes. But this law was made in June 1898, right? Mm-hmm. So the, the Jamaican Assembly went and... and formalize what was always the law. I, I and, want to back up a bit because I know you use 1898, but I just want our listeners to understand that the, the, these laws were being discussed from this from the 1600s in, and then oh, after, yeah. at, after, the Chief Tatch's, um, after Chief Tatch's rebellion in 17, uh, war in 1760, then this is when they began to began to use yes, these laws. Yes. yes, they did. They did. Yes, yeah. yes. And we give thanks for that. But so, so they just changed and codified it in the Jamaican Assembly in yes. 1898. Yes. Do you see that that law continued in Jamaica with the punishment being whipped? You get whipped going in when you're found guilty. You get whipped. They strip you naked, bust your ASS, and then when you're leaving, they strip you naked again at the end of the sentence and bust your ASS. That was that happened th- until 2013, when the Jamaican Parliament sat and said, "What do we do with the Obia law?" You know what they did? Mm. They only removed whipping. You know why they removed whipping? Mm-mm. Because whipping as a punishment was against international law. So the only thing that forced the Jamaican Parliament to adjust the Obia law a little is to take out the whipping part of it mm-hmm. in 2013. In 2013. Talk us, yes. through, t- tell us what, what it says, um, Bert. I, 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 and thank you so much for sending me the document because I'm looking at this. Tell me, give us some idea of what the, the, the law really says. All right. So you're ready. Mm-hmm. Let's pull up. Yes. <laughs> so what the law ready. says is that a person who is practicing obia means any person who, to the effect, any fraudulent or unlawful purpose for gain or for purpose of frightening any person uses or pretends to use any occult means or pretends to possess any supernatural power or knowledge. That person gone in prison. So if a man puts up a tent in Jamaica and says he's running a Christian revival and he can heal you and he puts his hand on you and you fall down and he gives oil and rubs on your forehead in the name of Christianity, that's not illegal. But if you come and say you're over your man and you give me some oil and say I must rub up with it, and that oil has medicinal value, then um, you can go to prison. So, so stick Straight. up in. So hold a sec there, because it seems to me as if what you just read from the law, um, yeah. if, if it happens, whether it happens in the church or it happens on the street corner under a tent yeah. with a person yeah. identifying as a priest or as an Obi-Man or as a Christian, that it doesn't matter what you identify as. Is the act, it seems as if it is... It is no, 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 no. What oh. happens if you say you're doing to the name of Jesus, it's okay. So the law stipulates rub- that? No, it says that, well, don't, they don't trouble Christians who do the same thing. They no. only trust man that same name, obi man. But, but, but I'm talking to you now as a lawyer. What does the yes. law say? The law does not, well, it says obia. The person practicing obia, so 
it's, it's confusing, isn't it? Because yeah, read it again, Bert. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go slowly. Yes. A person practicing obia means any person who, to effect any fraudulent or unlawful purpose, or for gain, or for purpose of frightening any person, uses or pretends to use any occult means, or pretends to possess any supernatural power or knowledge. That can fit into a lot of belief systems. Yes. But it's only the obia man that go prison, not the evangelist who says he's doing it and can rub oil on you and you'll get better. You know? Yeah, I, I'm fine. I'm, I have to take a break, but I find this interesting because... So I, you don't want to hear the punishment before you no, take the break? Or come back? Uh, let me take the break or else I'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I won't punish you now. When you come back, I punish you. Exactly, yes. yes. Which is an <laughs> occult. I mean, there are just yes. so many things in there that the assumptions are made that are not properly defined that I think we would have forgot. Um, because how do you determine that what is being done in the church? So what they do is, they do, when a law is this vague and it's so, as it were, you know, you don't know what it really means, it's just an open door now for the judge who is colonially minded to come now and tell you that you're practicing obia and whatever. But I you don't see. ready for the punishment. Yes, no, what, what, what was the punishment in that case? Oh, if I don't know what it really means. It's just an open door now for the judge who is colonially minded to come now and tell you that you're practicing obia and whatever. But I you see. don't ready for the punishment. Yes, no, what, 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 what was the punishment in that case? Oh, if you could. All right, so this is what they do with the obia man. They take him, take away his vials and his oils, and it says every person practicing obia shall be liable to imprisonment with or without hard labor for a period not exceeding one year and in addition thereto in lieu thereof whipping so they can carry you in and whip you and send you back out or they can imprison you and whip you strip you naked and bust your ass Mm. Mm-hmm. That's what they did. Up to 2013. That's up, what we had on our book. They could whip you. Now, you can still go for one year in Jamaica. All they took off was the whipping. And because there was pressure outside of Jamaica, where the Jamaican parliament had to remove whipping for wa- rape, and they had to remove whipping for rape, and they removed whipping for obia. Mm-hmm. So there are two things you could do, two abhorrent, according to them, crimes, mm-hmm. where whipping was given in Jamaica. One is rape. And mm-hmm. the other one was Obia. Mm-hmm. And so after you're through now, listen to this. This yes. is the only law I know I've ever read that says after Kabu finished getting her whipping mm-hmm. for being an Obia woman, she's now under police supervision. After she finished her sentence, everything, mm-hmm. she now is under police supervision. You've done the sentence, you know? Mm-hmm. Them start watching out. This is the only law I know that you'll get police supervision after you're done your sentence for the rest of your life. And that's and that's on the book up to today. It is on the book up to today. And we're not we're not embarrassed. Right? There, there have been many calls to repeal the laws. I remember that Marley Mello who fought, for example, um, came yeah. came out with guns blazing from the hips. Um, the, the in the last in the, the, the most recent call I'm I'm, I'm recalling um, when that yeah. was made when she got up and talk, and spoke to the fact that this was an evil and and dangerous practice and, and I'm I'm kind of I, th- I think she did use the word evil if I if I'm remembering correctly <laughs> but um and I know that Delroy Chuck has his own views on on this because he raised the matter of constitutionality and whether or not this law. It's even against the Constitution. Your own thinking it of is. that. Mm-hmm. It is, because there's a law that says you have a right to practice your religious beliefs. So this law is coincide, is colliding with the right to practice your religious beliefs. You know? Mm-hmm. So, 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 so what, what, what is wrong? What, what is out there? What the Obia man that they say doing? What, what is the ill? What is it that they are afraid of? What are mm-hmm. they afraid of? Mm-hmm. Yes? Could it be, Bert, that the punishment, and this is why I, I, I started with you from um, enslavement and, and in the fact yeah. that, that, that they developed this, uh, they, they found the need to p- put this law in place outside of Chief Touch's, um war. Could it be that yeah. the, the punishment was so cruel? Because I, I've been looking at some of the arguments out of the... The British Parliament, when it was raised there, the discussions yeah. there, and some of the words used, even the, the, the enslavers were frightened by the yes. early punishment for Ogre. Yes. Could it be that they, they, they drove the fear 
of their devil and their god inside of of, of the in the people in the African people That's the enslaved right. Africans. That's what they did. That they were, were afraid. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Because there are, there are records of Obia men in that time mm-hmm. threatening the enslaver that he's going to make him disappear, and they were dead afraid of, of us. Mm-hmm. So it was one of our weapons, man. Listen, mm-hmm. Kabo, this is one of our great weapons to push back against the enslavers. Mm-hmm. So they tried to rob us of that weapon that we had. Do you know that even us, uh, may you have in this discussion now, um, that there are a lot of people who are cringing, there are going to be many calls. Yeah, they say, believe in Obia. Yes, that's, that's the thing. Yes, yes. And, 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 and so what about the other religious practices which are not Christian? We should ban them? Yes. Do they, do they have, and that's a good question, do they have on these, on the book still, um, yes. questions of the paraphernalia, of the materials that, I, cause I, I know in the, in the, in, the, in, during the period of, of enslavement and colonization. Yeah, they know, yeah, they, they would take away the oils and other things that they find. They have the power to remove them. Does the law um, stipulate that, that the, you know, materials like that, like oils and so on, that, you know, if you're found with these, then you can be, Deemed to be practicing. Yes, they call them instruments of obia. Ah, what are these? Well, they must tell us. Apparently, they, they, they don't have any drawings. They don't tell us what they are. They just call it instruments of obia. Like, like maybe, oh. maybe like blessed olive oil. Yeah, the you know, kind um, of oils and the medicines that feather, they have. candle. Yeah. Because, Bert, there was a story in one of the newspapers. I don't know if you remember. It's not so long ago. Where a police officer, it's not so long ago, you know, um, was arresting a young lady who had just walked out of, uh, a candle shop and she had bought can- scented candles, but she was arrested as having obia, instruments of obia. That's just oh, within the oh, 2000s. Well, I'd have liked to, to find out what became of that I'm because, find- yes, be- Alex because what audit. happened is, yeah, <laughs> yes. when, when the, ob- when the obia man is brought to court, as mm-hmm. it were, you wonder who is giving the evidence that he's practicing obia. That's kind of very interesting to me. So it must be some kangaroo courts that drag those people before the courts. So tell me now, the, the Indian people who come on our television and promise that they can read your hand and tell you what's good for you and tell you your future, that comes on our television every Sunday. Um, the people who are abhorred about my saying that obia should not become criminalized, I wonder if they have a problem with that. Because part of the problem, you know, Kabu, is that when things are done by black people, it's wrong. But other people can practice it. And yes, it's not yes. wrong. Same thing, you know. Yes. It's, it's self-hate it, it, all it's over. It's the accent. It's the accent yes. and, so the, and, and the texture just, of your hair. Yeah. So any, how many letters you have seen being sent to the press objecting to the Indians who come on our television on Sunday saying that they have oils for you to keep your girlfriend and your boyfriend and to tell you the future? How many persons are enraged about that? But well, they're going to be enraged about my discussion with yes, you yes. about things that, because it's just, is we well, practicing? F- from your legal perspective, would these fall under the, the Most obia? Certainly. Act, obia? Of course. But just, but just practice openly. So can, can we do a, a, a citizen's arrest to bring it to, into, into the public sphere and to bring, and to challenge it? What you and I should is, is, is write to the television station that Cabo and Bert would like to come on to have our little program too. Well, yes. <laughs> and, if, and, and, and then if they reject, and then, but obviously these people are paying a bag load of money to care. It's not, it's not the television stations doing what? this, you know. This is an infomercial, you know. These people are paying this is the television stations millions of dollars to, to put, to get that on, you know. You, Oh yeah, yeah. remember I said go, but 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 are we are we given the same is the same kind of consideration given to uh, to to black people on the island? (laughs) No, they they wouldn't allow us to do that because you see, if if once there's a black face, then it's a problem. So let me ask you now, Bird, where are we now with the with the with the law, the Obia law? Uh, The last time, still tinkering around. We are afraid, Kabu. It's a long list of what you call colonial retention that we are afraid to remove. The parliament can assemble tomorrow morning. This is not constitutionally protected law. And by a simple majority, just delete this law out of the books. It's not, it doesn't take it. just a simple majority of the parliament who can repeal this law. But every time colonialism comes up in front of us, we are afraid to remove the King of England. We are afraid to... I wrote to the Chief Justice to retire. God save the Queen in our courts. He, he wrote back and said, noted. That's all he said to me. <laughs> and... 
And so you got one of those. Noted. Mm. <laughs> those yeah. noted. So yes. we are afraid of our shadow. Listen, in yeah. England, they no longer say God save the queen or the king in their courts. They don't do it in England. They don't do it in England. And we are still doing it down here. Wow. As a matter of you fact, Bert, I want don't to... Don't say I'm in the wrong profession. But yeah, you're not no, sorry but for... I was just good. I don't know sorry for you. You see right where you're there because but if you're not there, I don't know how we're going to manage. So I need the therapy. I need therapy. Well, for come... 45 years, God saved the king in my court. Well, and listen, I have to be there cringing every time. You, we, 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 it's going to happen on a bird. Let, let me just say something to you. I want to invite you. Um, you're hardly coming out of the studio, but I want to invite you in the studio for a much, a much <laughs> longer conversation. Tell you why. When you have looked at the at the arguments in the British Parliament um, yeah. during the the 1700s, 1800s regarding yeah. the Obia laws in Jamaica and also the arguments that were being held in the courts in Barbados yes. uh, and and then um, for us to, to, to have a conversation about that because the mi- Minister Malahu for its response to the the request uh, that when when I think it was Delroy Chuck or, or somebody who had raised this um, to appeal the Obia laws um, was frightening it, it came it came from from a place of um, religious you know, fanatics. Man, them file lawsuit against us. <laughs> well, that's, well, we're going to have to chat now, but we don't have you as a lawyer. So, no, I, 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 <laughs> we are prepared to pay the price to uphold our African dignity. I say yes. that. So, come at us. Yes. Come at us. We're, yeah. so what you're... Uh, okay, so you're... Uh, before we wrap up, because we have two minutes. Yeah. You're, um, you're thinking on this now, and what would you advise, um, the government or, 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 yeah. or members of parliament? Very good. Um, Very good question. Mm-hmm. Well, the reparation council is an advisory body to the government, and we have already told the government, repeal the OBI law without any, it does, it shouldn't even be debated. It should just be removed and we announce it to the, the, the world. In Antigua, they rounded up about 10 OBI men and publicly flogged them when i mean back then way oh, back okay then. okay okay they were yes. publicly flogged yes, yes. in Antigua, mm-hmm. not just in the prison they took them mm-hmm. into the square and beat them yes the the, the punishment was was cruel and, yeah, so and, if you if you take the miseducated jamaicans they are more abhorred about obia than enslavement itself Yes. You know, they think that the white man have a right to enslave us and they would prefer to become under that system more than Obia. Wow. Hmm? Wow. Oh, 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 how much, um, much cars have been on the back of any African Jamaican by Obia man? Mm-hmm. And how many scars are on us for being beaten to death mm-hmm. by our enslavers? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that legally, from a straight legal perspective, I hear you that you have said it's that... Um, it's unconstitutional. <laughs> yes, it's unconstitutional. And international law says that all religious practices must be protected by the society. So I'm here to protect all religious practices. That's why when a man locks him here and then can go to prison and trim him just because he's now doing a sentence. I fought against that and won that case on a constitutional grounds that your locks are part of your religious beliefs. So yes. it's just a, anything that is black is being punished. Yes. Uh, I, I hope that it doesn't have to get to the point where you have to put the Obia laws on trial um, in another play uh, because we will come with you out to St. Thomas or anywhere else. Oh, yeah, it, was, me, it was St. Thomas that we had the last trial, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it, for Governor yeah. Year? So in that very yeah. same courthouse, um, yeah. we can have we can have that, that trial or anywhere in St. Mary since his chief Tetchy met them met them um but then bring. Uh, you know in. our parish have a strong. Yeah, and I know you with the strong pan that thing. St. Mary, that thing there. We, we are spiritual. We're, no, we're deeply spiritual, <laughs> and, we're, spiritual. and we're very serious about with spirituality, yeah, understanding yeah. who we are. So, all right. So, so you would say now, Bert, um, they can repeal this. They don't even have to announce it. They can just do that. Yeah. In Parliament. That's right. They can. It doesn't take anything. But here it is this morning, 2024. People feel that enslavement is not a crime, but Obia is a crime. Can you believe that? Yeah. What a good job they did with our minds. Yes, post-traumatic slavery disorder. Uh, yeah. So we're going to have to walk it back, I think. We have to walk it back to say why this came into being, what That's it all is. Of, but, but you know, yes. Cabo, another thing I'm passionate about. You hear them say, when we talk, we talk, Pato, we talk bad. Yes. Pato in my books is, is corrupted African. It's corrupted. It don't, by, it, it, it don't even corrupted at all. Not no, you know, you're not corrupted. 
it is it's a new language that we developed yeah, out of yeah. out of out of our our condition out of slavery but also out of our creativity so so you know but but i i get the point you're making and i agree with you that this is something that we have to discuss uh there are words embedded in our language that that are very critical to our existence for us to speak into being that which we are and others and other things so i want i inviting you again to the studio I anytime, you come, you come, anytime. We, we, we raise I like overborn King Charles. They more kill me now. No, nobody now kill you. If I no touch, listen. Look here. Remember, I'm telling you. If I no touch, birds in no touch. We right, I said. I said. He's up. He's up. No, we're born, Charles. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much. Yes. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Without Black apology, power. we're back with you inside of the Black Africa power. Forum. Uh, the repealing the Obia laws in Jamaica. There's a lot to unpack. My next um, guests are in studio with me, and we're looking forward to the conversation going forward. High Priest Akiva Israel is a trained educator, theologian, and counseling psychologist. He is a preeminent spiritual scholar initiated in seven mystic brotherhoods and a proud mystic spiritual practitioner with over 30 years experience. He is the high priest and leader of the Mystic House of Zion, an organization committed to the preservation and ethical use of Jamaica's traditional spirituality. He is a successor and knowledge bearer of a direct undiluted lineage of Jamaican indigenous spiritual practices, including Arawak spirituality, Obia, Kumina, L.W. Deloines. This lineage is unbroken and has stood firm for more than 300 years. Joining him in studio, our brother, he's been here before, he's no stranger to the space, Alex Moore Minot, who is a true-born Windward Maroon, he has a BSc with honors in international relations, international relations from the University of the West Indies. He's an agriculturalist known for his work with the University of the West Indies concerning the grassroots cultivation of cannabis, especially as it concerns benefit to young Jamaicans. He is a cultural activist, a maroon rights activist, and former minister of foreign affairs for the Akampong Maroons. Alex is a oral historian, a dancer, and herbalist of the renowned Granny Nanny Cultural Group, and you hear me playing the CDs here many, many times, and in 2018 successfully led an effort to secure the repatriation of cultural material from the Smithsonian. We need to talk about that, Alex. Also, he is the leader of the internationally accredited West Indian Tribal Society, which has observer status for the World Intellectual Property Organization, Intergovernmental Committee on Intellectual Property and Genetic Resources, Traditional Knowledge, and uh, Folklore. Alex was the apprentice and student of the great Maroon leader, the late Major Charles Aarons. He is an Indigenous representative for the Portland Environment Action and a tireless advocate for the land and water rights of Maroons and other Native Jamaican people. Thank you both so much thank for joining you. me in the studio this morning. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, sister, as usual. Glad to be here. This is a serious space right now. As usual. Because yes. because in this space we're confronting ourselves. Yeah, Correct. And too many of us are afraid to confront ourselves. Yep. We're talking about repealing the Obia laws, still on the book, as we heard from Bert Samuels. In 2013, they removed an element of the punishment, which was whipping. And only because internationally <laughs> that was illegal to do. So lots of conversation about this, but at the same time, lots of fear. I want to talk, I want to start with you, High Priest, because... Even my own research, and I've read almost everything now, on the 
practice of obia and as obia as spirituality obia as religion no matter what you read it as there has been in the colonial documents no definition of what that is i don't know if you've noticed that yes they have not they have a lot of punishments for it but they have not managed to define it why do you think that is so i think it is so because there's a level of secrecy um in this practice to preserve um the people from the evils of the oppressors uh and much of the information and secrecy of this arcane practice came from our friends on the other side and therefore the the our hardly our friends though huh? hardly our friends no, these are not our friends I mean, when I mean, they say our friends you, oh okay i see what you mean yes. <laughs> our friends on the other side <laughs> well good and tell them what i want to do yes. yes yes so people naturally are afraid of things that they don't know okay our ancestors were not in the business of revealing secrets even to their own so there are practices in our history that the ordinary people can know this mm-hmm. is outside we're talking about 300 years 400 years ago mm-hmm. okay and they are what we call inner chamber secrets or as the rosicrucians would say um secrets of the sanctum sanctorium okay that had to pres- be preserved had to be kept only by those who were initiated in these mysteries mm-hmm. and so that it is no wonder then you're saying that the enslavers and later even those who were um presiding over the ongoing colonization of Jamaica post emancipation that it is no wonder then that they have not managed to define this no, on they the book haven't. and then so that when you look at the definition it could as we heard even Bert reading this morning um it they would they, it sounds to me as if they were describing and defining pentecostalism correct if if you took that word out this, this is pentecostalism it is so then uh and everything is connected of course um alex how important is it then for us to go forward to before slavery in terms of what this is that have that they have now criminalized and um devalued to the extent that we are even afraid of it um how important is it to go into those spaces and when i say forward i mean to sankofa to 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 look back to go forward at the spaces that this came out of when did they became so afraid and i'm talking the enslavers of our spirituality that they criminalized it well i think that we have to go right back to grand nanny herself and the the fear that was developed in them to have to Font of a better word, koto, to not just uh, a dark-skinned indigenous person, but a woman who, using her spirituality and using her deep knowledge of her surroundings, and when I say surroundings, I also mean a spiritual surroundings, uh, plants, etc. They were entirely saddened that they had to surrender to such a person who they saw as less than and, and they and they and they mentioned her mm-hmm. in their um preambles and their discussions in their legal um discussions um early in the day before they criminalized mm-hmm. um uh, uh the the spiritual practices of the africans they mentioned her that there was um this 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 old and they they talk about her being an elder but they said old woman and that she um 
was uh, that, that she practiced this. They mm-hmm. actually mentioned that. I found that in the document in the readings yesterday. I was uh, over the weekend. I was, uh, you know, a, a little bit surprised because I hadn't seen that exact um, quote coming out of their, 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 their legal spaces talking about Grandi Nani, but not in necessarily um, uh, of, of trying to, to criminalize it at the time, but to say that this existed and this is what they were doing. Uh, this is what our African ancestors were doing on the island in terms of their spiritual practices. Um, she was mentioned early. So that you're saying that we need to go as far back as there to yes. understand what they were seeing and why they eventually became so afraid that they criminalized and made a law against it. Because what is interesting is that we found records from even the year 1740 where, that are currently housed at Lambeth Palace. That said, and, and for those who don't know, Lambeth Palace is the seat of the Holy See, um, in charge of the Anglican Church. And I found it shocking the mention that stated that, quote unquote, the treaty, there is no effort made to convert the treaty Negroes who are allowed a high priest of their own cult. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, getting past their presumption of giving us permission to have a high priest uh, is the recognition of the fact that there was a leader of this indigenous traditional spirituality Mm -hmm. that at that time because of war and 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 self-assertion that they had to recognize the fact that we had our own clergy, we had our own leadership in our spiritual system. Yes. And that's very important because the king or queen of England, at whichever time, is considered the defender of the faith. Mm-hmm. And that means that we are entirely outside of their 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 gambit, their their radius, and we are a separate people as defined first by our spirituality. Mm-hmm. So we are hunting an identity in Jamaica whilst avoiding the spiritual aspect of ourselves, which I find totally ridiculous. At some point, um, Priest Akiva, the colonial government... Uh, and they kept changing the the obia laws uh converted and converged two systems that they called it two systems this is how they identified it one was obia and another that they said um had developed probably came they said in the in the in the arguments and in the british parliament with the Africans who, um, the later Africans, who, they were still <coughs> enslaving because it was a process that was ongoing. They had done so much to, to, to kill the spirituality of, of, of the, uh, of Obia that they were, they, they saw something coming in that was myalism. Mm-hmm. And so they said there is no difference between Obia and myalism. And as such, when they, when they reference Obia in the, in the act or in the law, they are also referencing myalism, that the two things were one, mm-hmm. two, the Obia and myalism, and so they criminalized both. I want, to, I want to say something about the definition of Obia and what, all right, Obia is not voodoo, Obia is not Palo of Cuba, it is not Kimbanda of Brazil. Obia is an eclectic practice that emerged uh, from the spiritual and superstitious belief of all the ethnic groups domiciled on the territory of Jamaica over the last 300 years and beyond. So you're saying that it didn't come as a spiritual practice um, with, with, the, with the... You're saying it's indigenous to Jamaica? It is, it is, it is. How so? Because if that is the case, then how would you explain, or, or well, I suppose Bookman Duty did go to, um, go to, to, to IT, but we saw the very same practices, um, that we saw with the, um, Chief Techi revolution, um, mm. in the, in the Aishan revolution, um, before Bookman's prayer and, and, and all the rituals and so on that took place. I mean, exact same. And, and we, we see that repeating itself across, mm. across the Caribbean, which means Africans had something in common which was their spirituality, that became known as... All, as all, all the people who came here saw, came and saw people, the indigenous people of mm-hmm. Jamaica. 
okay. and and contributed to that stream of what is now called obia mm-hmm. in 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 modern times. Oh, in modern times. Yes. Right. So they came. There there were people here already before Columbus. Mm-hmm, of course. Every as a practitioner, I can safely say from an academic per, um, point of view that every ethnic group contributed to what we now call Obia. All right. And that makes yes. a lot of sense because, as you said, yes. um, there were people here before Columbus. Yes. Um, the Tainos were, the, were And they were, were never, they were Africans they were never who were already totally here. totally eliminated in exactly. this country. And so the spiritual practices from, from, yes. not from Egypt, from Sudan, from Nigeria would have already been on the island long before. Yes. Before they came. And so you're saying that was a melting plot of, a melting it pot. It is. Of, so to continue the definition, mm-hmm. the central practice of Obia in its original form is the placating of the ancestors and nature forces to address different uh, uh, challenges of human life. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Every other thing that came off, uh, after that uh, is ad- added on. So so, so, the, so, where does Mayalism, because they were the ones who introduced this, and I'm trying to, 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 to understand. I think even Mayalism was an attempt by the colonial powers to understand spirit manifestation in the lives of the practitioners. And I, I think I would work with that because, you know, it's interesting that at some point they, they themselves argue this, like, where did this come from? Uh, you know, and one of the things they said uh, in the... In the discussions in Parliament in the UK, was that uh, it was uh, uh, almost like a deceptive act on the part of the Africans to include Christianity and the Christian practices into Obia, and then to develop something called Mayalism. This is basically what no, they were Mayalism, saying. Mayalism, my, 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 Mayalism, was before the imposition of Christianity upon the indigenous people of Jamaica. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, so it is really important to understand the spaces mm-hmm. where these, uh, the, 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 the practices came out of. And I'm hearing your definition. Give us a definition again because I interrupted you many times. So without interruption. It is an indigenous practice that is focused on placating the ancestors and nature forces to address different uh, challenges of human life. Central, um, you know, and the, much of its secrets uh, came down from the ancestors, and and also from through the the manifestation of spirits on the outer plane and on the inner plane. Through, from the dream state, the secrets come. Okay, so as as so we we move from that original definition or the true definition of obia. And mm-hmm. as I said before, all the ethnic groups contributed. It's mm-hmm. not just, Obia is not solely African. It's Taino. It is Irish. It is European, uh, folk, uh, witchcraft. And I think when you go on that line now, this is where I think we're going to have to have a serious conversation with ourselves. Yes. Because we know that European folk witchcraft is, is wickedness. And then if that is, and I'm saying that in the same way that, um, that Marley Manor who fought to use wickedness, I mean it in the very same way. Having, having been in their spaces and understanding them thing, um, so that if that is integrated at any level yes. into our spirituality, then doesn't that become almost, um, a, a fight against itself? This is where ancestors are literally, uh, fighting with, with their, it is said by the our ancient ancestors that when the Creator was giving out wisdom, He divided it among the nations, and many people came here and they contributed to. People is an active word. Yes, we I don't people. know. In my theological head, mm-hmm. from a long time, I've had a challenge in defining what people call evil. What is people? Then let, let us don't define um, evil. Then the let only, us define the, people. And the, who are people? Okay. The, for uh, the uninitiated, 
has a different definition of evil from the initiated. You were talking about energies, good and bad, positive and negative. Okay? I'm here to to define for you a practice that is indigenous to Jamaica and from an, I have an academic duty to present the facts. I cannot look at it through the color of uh, ethnic bias. But I can ask you the question. Yes. And, and then you can respond to say that you're not yes. going to look at it through the color of ethnic bias. And then my question now, from, from, from a space of vibrating at, the, yes. at a different energy, yes. at a different frequency, is to say, understanding the, the Caucasian, the frequency mm-hmm. at which the Caucasian vibrates. Yes. As opposed to the frequency at which our ancestors and the African spaces vibrate. That isn't there a contradiction in the practices if these two frequencies mm-hmm. are then uh, intertwined? At what at at what point mm-hmm. does it become uh, a, a contrary vibration or or, or, or frequency? May yes, I go ahead. Contribute. Yes. If we consider my sister, the fact that colonization was not something that our ancestors intended. And when you realize that our ancestors had to literally fight in order to survive, how could they fight an enemy that they did not understand? Therefore, our ancestors analyzed these practices of these other people in order to address them because we look at spirituality very one dimensionally because of Christian training and but there's a difference between spirituality and religion though yes but this is the issue our right. perception as a nation of spirituality is colored by a religion that was forced on us and we don't recognize the fact that spirituality is a tool that our ancestors use. It wasn't just something that we were that is, subservient but to. But that is at the point where, where we, we, we separate ourselves from spirituality. So that spirituality is, is not, is not a, 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 an animate or, or a one thing, but that no. spirituality is. Yes, it so, is on its own. And, right. and, and it is a, it is a pathway. It is a door to different levels of victory. So victory over the issues of daily life, as well as an overarching enemy. So it's Sun Tzu that says, if you know yourself, but do not know your enemy, you lose. If you know your enemy and do not know yourself, you lose the war. But you must know both yourself and the enemy. And so, there, and, and I understand the point that, that you're both making, you know, in that how things came together, how our ancestors, and, and even within the same document, this is basically what, 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 the, what the enslavers were saying, that when they looked at this manifestation that they came to call Mayalism, mm-hmm. they said it was a deception on the part of the African to, in, to, to, to integrate within its, uh, our practices that of their practices, in other words, of Christianity, within Obiak. That's what they said. That's what they said. And this said. is why I'm raising but this that, point. That is revival. Yeah. No, no. Really I'm, I'm, and truly. Well, but, they mentioned, but they also re- mentioned revivalism. But mm-hmm. I, the point I'm making is that mm-hmm. I'm just reading what happened in Parliament mm-hmm. um, in, from, from their Hansard which is that they had the conversation and the conversation was, should we criminalize these two things? And the point was made that they are not separate. Mm-hmm. They are one and the same. Mayalism was an, an offshoot, came out of Obia, um, but it was um, mixed now that they had embraced, the Africans had, had embraced the Christian um, way, or put it that way, then the, the Irish mm-hmm. way or, or the British way. And um, to fool, they said to deceive them that they had converted to Christianity because they saw the manifestation and did not understand it. So I, the, the point I raised was to say they made that distinction, but at the same time they came back to say this is one and the same. Mm-hmm. And um, in that way, we criminalize both. Yes. Because even Mayal, 
right? Mayal is still a word that is used by at least two spiritual groups in Jamaica. Maroon still use that term, and Bongo, Kumina people Kumina. still yeah, use that, that term. Yeah. Mayal is, I would say, the umbrella. Because if we were to say Obi, or as a... Oh, you have to take a break? I am so sorry. Oh. <laughs> I am so sorry. I missed the time signals. My bad. Go ahead. Bert Samuels to come back with his legal mind. I'm going to invite uh, my two special guests to come back with their trained mind and to to help us to understand this so we can open phone lines, have a longer discussion because as it is now, we only have 20 minutes leave and here we are. Mark, uh, over me, but don't enslave me, repealing uh, the case to re- for repealing the Obia laws in Jamaica. First of all, um, we have to understand um, what this is because there is such a b- big misunderstanding of what this is when we talk about Obia, what it was, what it has developed into, what it, has, what it is now and why it is where it is. Um, those who enslaved us and colonized us, um, they had all of these conversations and they talked about what would have happened in the future if the laws remained on the book. And the very same thing that they said, I'm talking about the high court judges, the very same things that they said in the Parliament of England is the very same things that are happening right now. So they had us locked from long time. Um, this witchcraft is wor- worse than Obia. It's one of them things that work, aren't we? Um, so, so let me just say, um, and this is tongue in cheek, by the way, so don't, don't, don't start cussing me now. Uh, all right. So I, what I want to look at, uh, in the, in the next 20 minutes, and I'm, I'm going to interrupt as, as little as possible, is that, um, on the island of Jamaica, there is an understanding or a misunderstanding of what Obia is. And this is why it's still on the books, because even in Parliament, they are afraid of it. Maybe, as you said, it's just a mysticism of it that yes. makes them so afraid. Um, you talk about the secrets of it, that, and the yes. secrets are revealed at the second level of consciousness, which is a dream state. Mm-hmm. And because of that, there are people who, uh, you know, I mean, we're going to talk about dream another time, because dreams are used to control others too, because some people feel like they cannot get to that level of consciousness. And so that then the whole thing take on another level. Let us talk about why is it necessary for us to understand what this is and that this is not um, the kind of, uh, for, for, for the, the, the minister used the term evil, she also used wickedness, I think. I don't want to misquote her. And then so many other people see this in the very same way. What would you want to say to our listeners in terms of getting them on shift, just to begin to shift the paradigm? It now got shift this morning, but to begin to shift the paradigm. I want to complete my definition of Obia for the youth. Oh, I thought you'd finish. No. My, my bad, sorry. So, uh, in its original form, it's a placating of the ancestors and nature forces. And as more and more people came on the island and contributed their, their superstitious and spiritual belief, it became more eclectic. Okay, so the Jew, we have element of this practice that is Jewish, Irish, European, and after Jamaicans started to travel on and overseas um, from the days of the building of the Panama Canal, etc., we had now the introduction of Solomonic grimoire secrets added on, and especially through the published works of L. W. De Lawrence. So mm-hmm. that's where we are now. So it's all it's an a composite now. Practice, yes. Okay. Uh, so what we know of coming from Benin, for example, which is, we're not talking about voodoo now, we're talking mm-hmm. about the, the practice of Obia, which closely resembled what we saw in the early stages mm-hmm. um, on the island, coming straight out of Benin. You're saying that has mingled and mixed with, with, within that cultural mixing part um, right here on the island, and even outside of the island, that the, that it has changed, it has become something else. Does it still maintain its mm-hmm. um, high spiritual? Yes, spiritual? for those who are from the true tradition. I need to say something. When you read the literature that is out there, some of the literature say that Obia is uh, a Khan. It isn't. No, it's not a Khan. Uh, Obia is closest 
to Igbo practices. And Igbo out of Nigeria. And I know that yes. we have, and, and especially because the word Obi is also out of the Igbo um, mm. ethnicity and, and, and the Igbo tribes. But, but the practice itself, because I've been into both spaces, yes. um, looking at um, Benin, looking at the Igbo and mm-hmm. looking at Jamaica. And what I found in my own research is that Benin is where we are closest or where we close resemble. Pra- as a uh, practitioner... And, as a, as um as a researcher no as a practitioner yeah it is Igbo. it is Igbo. and i i know that is a general saying right that it is yes. Igbo. um the only space where it is where where we say it's benin is right and the Igbo people the only of person, um, ghana yeah. mm-hmm. the only person who said it is benin is me i mean nobody else is going to say it's benin and it's only because I have looked at it in that way, but I'm not okay. arguing Igbo. It's just because I've been there yes. and I've been to Benin and That's I've, clo- I've we are been closer among to the Igbo and the Iwe people of Ghana, of of um, in, oh, in practice, of Nigeria, in the praxis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it is. Uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't mm-hmm. even argue. That's the root yeah. part of it. What we call the root work part of it. Yes. Would be close closer to so Igbo. Igbo and the every people of God. Every. All right. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and, and I take the point because at the end of the day, we're one person, we're one yes. people. Um, In I, the Igbo ceremonial display. part of it now is Jewish Solomonic. Mm. We're talking okay. about the evocation So, the ceremonial of part is Jewish Solomonic, you're saying? Yeah, from the Solomonic Greek, um, that, that, that body of literature that is called Solomonic Grimoire, mm-hmm. the Great and Lesser Keys of Solomon, Six and Seven Book of Moses, mm-hmm. the Book of Ser- uh, Mo- Ceremonial Magic, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so, so there is, so it is a wide and as you say, eclectic, um, practice. Yes. Why do you think that it is still, um, on the books? It is still a crime. I think it, it is because of the church. The church um, is the main protagonist for keeping the Obia law on the books. The po- it is not politically; it would be considered political suicide for the the political leadership to remove the Obia law, because the church is adamant that it should remain. So you don't think that it's going to it's going to be removed right now? We would need a very brave. Um, Prime Minister to do this. But I have, as a trained theologian, I say to the church, you say that your message and your Messiah is so powerful, so redemptive. Okay? Why are you afraid of the Obia law being removed from the books? If you believe in what you preach, you should have no fear. About um, Mother Bad Pan up the hill. <laughs> and Father <laughs> told me wrong. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but so much of these practices, uh, these yes. rituals, uh, are also um, within the church. You find so many of the rituals uh, within the church. So, so that it, what it probably t- it will take, I think, and, and you can tell me if you agree with this, is, is a coming together. Because you have the... the um, the, the, the council of churches yes. is, is a sitting down at that level because there's just so much anger. It is not even that don't do it. It's that there's a lot of anger around mm. whether or not this should be done because of, I think, and, and Alex, you, you, I'm not sure if you've been looking at this, but the, the punishments that were meted out between 1760 and 2013, <laughs> if you will, um, that the punishments have been so cruel so wicked, so um, ins- so terrible that even the enslavers were concerned that they were over the top. So that what would this have done to the minds of, well, of people? Let's let's be totally honest. I mean, in in our Jamaican practice, when you don't want your child to do something. What you do? You punish them, you, you, you beat them, you conk them, whatever the case may be. And eventually after repetitive motions and that, they're going to stop because they're going to associate this with pain. And so this is where it has... A, I have ancestors that were in prison that were even transported off of the island of Jamaica for the practices. 
And let us be quite honest. The other thing is, is that the community used to look after the traditional priest, right? Um, after a time when Christianity replaced and supplanted our traditional ways, the traditionalist became a symbol of poverty because he was no ostracized, he was no, he didn't have good clothes to wear, he didn't have a good house to live in. And so our tradition has become associated with poverty and pain. So this is really what happened. At the end of the day, we have an incomplete understanding of who we are in terms of uh, our spiritual identity. And so therefore there is no source of intrinsic pride in who we are because mm. without some an identifier mm. then who are we mm. we don't have a distinct personality mm-hmm. as separated from our oppressor mm-hmm. because we're con- currently following their model mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so if we look at it our spiritual system is way more diverse than we're thinking mm-hmm. right what is called obia is is the solitary practice of of herbs and as the high priest says the placation of ancestors feeding of ancestors etc but for example mayal and gumbe and um jankunu these are all the community manifestations where you'd come together, play your drums, feed your ancestors as a... But aren't there, there are also various levels of prejudice and discrimination from among ourselves yes. uh, against even some of these rituals of um, and these practices, uh, cultural practices that, that came out of, out, of, out of Africa and out of ourselves. Um, what then, and I know one of the, when we talked on the phone, Alex, um, one of the things that you were very concerned about is, is even utterances from certain spaces about, um, what this was and, and, and in public spaces too about how, um, you know, our spirituality can be weaponized then if you, if you will. Talk to me about that. My biggest issue is that when you have a fragile thing, you have to handle it with care. With kid gloves. You're not just going to grab up an egg and just, you know, the fact, and I use this point to say we are in a situation where our traditions are more vulnerable than before. When you go into a maroon community, you have people even ostracizing the thought of nranny. Oh, she was a wicked Obia woman and this and that. And because Are there you is. Serious? Of in course. The community. Of course. Even, even. So they're forgetting the process of forgetting. Yes, even in, even in Morton. You go to Morton now and you have people who are Adventists or whatever. And if you bring up Nanny, they, they don't want to hear it, but they want to live on the tax free land. They want to drink the free water, but. When you bring up Nani and Nani's contribution, because Obia now is seen as, and, and this was the skillful, um, the skillful maneuvering of the British. They created this word. We did not have this word. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. This is the first thing. Yes. Right. So the Maroon ancestors, for example, used to say, comfort or, or science or whatever the case may be. We had other words, right? We, we may not have used the word mayal per se, but we would have said cramante. Yes. Right? They came up, well, they came up with the, um, cramante, of course, being a port, right? So, yes. So, but, but generally when we came, when our ancestors came, because, and they were the same one who began to call us cramante too. Because yes. Of it, exactly. Only because they carried us through that port of cramante. But there's just so much to, to unlearn. Yes. To, to re- mm-hmm. that process of returning to our greatest self and our greatest levels of consciousness. I think that there's, it, it, it has to be, uh, Gradual. Of, yeah. The British on. mind warfare that they learned from the Roman books when they, when the Saxons invaded England and they found the old Roman books. The mental warfare. So they learned that they could create a term, associate something with it, and then make that as a tag for everybody. 
and and um, the documents show that the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the 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 research that I've done, just reading from the Hansard from out of their parliaments, that these were the conversations they were having. Of they course. said, "Leave it." There was one judge who said, and a member of parliament who said, "Not much had to be done because they are they've been looking at um, the, the the history from a hundred years before, and gradually." Um, Christianity is beginning to replace. And the people um, start to hear and themselves. And the people start, yes. exactly. So they expected this mm-hmm. exactly where we are. Mm-hmm. They knew they could have just left it. As a matter of fact, they were arguing for taking it off the books because they had already done such a good job yes. of miseducating yes. and programming um, the minds of our, of, of our people that, um, you know, it would take care of itself. Let me take a quick break and come back. Who are, as our Bert Samuel said to us, a Pan African attorney at law earlier this morning, would rather be enslaved than to see the act and the law, the Obia law, repealed in Jamaica. <laughs> Priest Akiva, that is a serious statement. Yes. You know, I'm going to say something. The oils and the powders and the candles that they call Obia in Jamaica is not the or it's not the indigenous practice. Mm. That's European witchcraft. And that's not that's not who that's not who we are as a people. Yes. That's the <laughs> contribution of European folk traditions. Oil powders, potions, these candles. Our ancestors work strictly with herbs. Well, with bones and with fingernails yeah. and with blood. Um, yes. But not the Especially the, when the revolution side, yeah. Time. But, but as you said, um, I, I, there's so much there that yes. is, um, mm. you know. So that's left hand secret. European contribution. What we call left hand yeah. path European contribution. But what I found, it, what I found in the documents, though, and as a theologian, you can help me with this. What I yes. found in the documents was that. Um, so the Obia laws were going very well for them after mm-hmm. Chief Tetchy's revolution. And then later on, in the 18, 1898 or so on, there was other revolutions happened in St. Mary. Yes. And uh, about seven or eight or so, um, white people were killed. And so they came back to the drawing board. They were very angry with the, uh, the enslavers who were in charge mm-hmm. of the laws at the time to say, you were not enforcing the laws right, the Obia laws. Because before every war, what our ancestors did, that they would meet secretly and they would perform these rituals Correct. and um, and then move to war and, and, and they would be successful at various levels. Mm. So that when they came back, they added now, they said what we left out at the first law was that um, we didn't put in the instruments of Obia. Mm-hmm. And so then they begin, they put in all these things that they saw ancestors with that never, they had no idea, no clue about. And I think this is where it might be coming from. I'm not sure if you have looked at that, but, mm-hmm. but your own thinking on that. That the fact that they included so many things that never wasn't even had anything to do with us. Yes, <laughs> rum, eggshells, everything, right. feathers, all kind of things. That it was their illegal. thing. Yes, it's not. It's not just that. I think. I think that the fear was so general that anything at all that they saw a dark-skinned person with. Because even it became rec- an, an, in, an in, implement. Even recently, as twenty eighteen. I had an issue in Port Antonio with the police. And when I took out my rum, right, to pour libations to my ancestors to ask them for help and petition my ancestors in the Maroon language, when the constables wrote up their report, they said I was speaking in a strange tongue. These are all Obia law, Obia act language now, in a strange <laughs> tongue, and with a, with, a, with a liquid that appears to be overproof white rum, right? I can find those papers and show. So, so they... Next time you're coming, please do me. I will, and I said to those constables, I said, you people are maroons. No, you people are mad. Right, you people are my people, but look at what you're writing about your own traditions. With, with, with liquid that appear to be overproof. Yeah, you, man, yes. and speaking a strange tongue. Now, this is the language that is protected by UN, you know, as a, as as number nineteen so, treasure to humanity. You know, they say a strange tongue. So the idea, so <laughs> and this this is, I mean, no, we only have five, three minutes. But so the idea then is that even this happened to you when, Alex. February the 3rd, 2018. 
Mm-hmm. And because Maroon chat too much because I was defending myself, my van is still in pound at St. Margaret's Bay beside Rio Grande. Has been since the On 3rd. 2018? Yes, the 3rd of February 2018. Yeah. You know, all right. The inclusion of the Obia implement or Obia instrument is to is to take away the power from 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 the. the we don't hear you so well. Yeah. It's it, the inclusion of the the listing of the uh, instruments of Obia. What they call the instruments yes. of Obia. Now, in European, in the Western mystery tradition, they are called tools of the art. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. In but, all the grimoires, but, that, that's what they're called. But over here, so it's implement it's of implements, implements of Obia. Obia. Yeah, well. And they know that, looking through their lens, if you strip the ceremonial magician from the tools of the art by which he conjures or evokes spirits, then he's powerless. So the, the list, that listing is to so we can't power. feed our ancestors. Yeah. We what can't intre- pour libations. What is, what is interesting as we talk about the, the, the rituals, pouring libation, feeding our ancestors. I'm going to um, at 8:35 play um, a clip just talking about the preparations in Israel for the sacrifice and the rituals the red of heifer. the red heifer. The red heifer. Yes, and yes. part of that is to kill the red heifer to mix that um, with the with the burnt um, the ashes the and ashes. so on. And then the temple has to be cleaned. That's and a so very powerful all, ritual. Yes. All of those for, for the um, for the third temple of Solomon to be rebuilt and for um, in the Jewish tradition for the Messiah to come yes. and in the religions in the Christian for the second coming of Christ. Yes. So, but that is a powerful ritual that they were about to unleash on the world. Yes. But that is looked upon by both Christians and um, and and Jews as as like a, a ritual of purification. I argue yes. that we need to protect ourselves when they're doing it. I, I agree. Because yes. the intention behind it, right, is that they want to cleanse the world of a particular set of people, not just cleanse themselves. I agree. How do we protect mm-hmm. ourselves? Well, we have to we have to embrace our traditions. We have mm-hmm. to be willing to look at the herbs that none of them used to use and how we can do our spiritual baths, how we can do our own offerings to the Most High Creator as well as our own offerings to our ancestors for our protection. The Temple Institute has requested from the um, from the Israeli police permission to have this um, sacrifice done on April 22 at the Passover. The permission has not yet been granted, but the request has been placed. And this is, so this is where we are. So thank you for that. We need to protect ourselves yes, when they are yes. doing that ritual. Mm-hmm. If they're doing it on the 22nd of April, they might not even announce it. So one way or the other, we protect ourselves on the 22nd of April. My brother priest, I need to talk to you again. You know, we told yes, you the other time, but why yes. should we repeal this? Maybe we just say it in, in, in 30 seconds. The, we, we need to preserve our spiritual, um, heritage, knowledge, secrets. Uh, it is our constitutional uh, right. I think the Obia law is unconstitutional and it must be removed, right? Um, to strip the people of their spiritual heritage is to make them slaves in perpetuity, okay? We want to be free at last. And, and Alex? I think that it is very repugnant and it is very... Um, Let's say, like a mental illness, to say that year after year you have a ministry of culture that is saying that we need to preserve Kumina, Maroon, Revival, all of these things. Maroon, for example, is protected by the UN, Maroon traditions, etc. But there, there has not been public education to change the mind so that people can start to be proud of their traditions and spirituality. And to understand the history of it. The history of it is, um, when we come back, we talk about the history mm-hmm. of it, right? Mm-hmm. We want to look at from the 1690s, from when they started mentioning Queen Nanny. Mm-hmm. Even when she died, they talked about who she was um, when she transcended, who mm-hmm. she was, why she was, and what she was doing. That, that was before they initiated the law. They enact, mm-hmm. enacted this law uh, um, in, uh, on, on the books. And there is just so much information available because they wrote them down. Yes. It is for us to understand it from our perspective because they were writing about us and not to see it um, through, through their own lenses. So that continues, I think, um, the, the fight 
to repeal the colonial laws on the books. Alex, we are fighting on many fronts coming home and you buck up on the on the beach side fighting for them to repeal the colonial laws of That's a part of our tradition as well, yes. protecting the environment and recognizing that it's sacred. Thank yeah. you so much, both of you. I really appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much. I want, I'm inviting you back. Yes. With whole heap more time. When okay. you're ready. When you're ready. Let so us we open know. the phone line. Okay. Very soon. So we open the phone line. Listen up. Top draw dollars, pick two, pick three, pick four. Hard pick and cash pot draws coming up, uh, in about 30, 45 seconds. Time on IRA FM is eight. 29, you're inside of the Africa Forum and we're standing by for the cash pot draws. So don't go anywhere. All right, there we go. 8.30 as we stand by uh, for this. Not quite sure who. Uh, is this Professor Bailey? No? Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Greetings. Uh, is this uh, Baba Yisrael? Yes, this is Dr. Yeshua Yeshua. Ah, thank you. Ah, thank you so much, Dr. Yeshua Yisrael. Uh, we tried to get you before and, and, and we weren't getting through, so I wasn't quite sure that you had come through, so my apologies. We already, um, spent some time talking about who you are, what you do, and, um, just the wide, um, work that you have done. But, but uh, this morning we're talking about uh, the levels of consciousness because you're coming into Jamaica uh, in in a few days, I think. Uh, when are you coming in? Uh, in a few days, on the 16th, I think, or the 17th, I'll be there. All right. Are you going to be presenting at a special event or is this a private uh, trip? No, this is a private trip after I'm coming from Mexico. I've been down in Mexico and I want to go to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. to spend some time and to collect myself and uh, experience the, you know, the the energy that's uniquely Jamaican. Of course, I understand totally. In terms of Afrocentric consciousness. Yes, I understand totally. And indigenous consciousness, because we've got that there too. The, yes. the, 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 yes. the, the, the ancients, the ancients have been here, <laughs> Dr. Yes, that's, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, And so one of the things that you do is to... Uh, focus on self-reflection and a self-reflection technique, but you do this also by foregrounding the the concept of the states of consciousness. What sparked your interest in exploring the states of consciousness? Well, I've been in, I've been on this path nearly fifty years. Forty-seven years I've been engaging a technology of consciousness that allowed me to take my subjective self-awareness into my objective cosmic self and thereby infuse the divinity of universal intelligence into my subjective thinking, and that broadened my awareness. Now, I became aware of this maybe as a graduate student when I was at Purdue. I came from a small town in Alabama and grew up there and went to the University of Arkansas, and by the time I got to graduate school, I recognized that I needed to expand my intellectual prowess. I was going to compete on a high level. So that got me to thinking about consciousness because I am have a minor in psychology. And in psychology, all basic car psychology courses says people only use 10% of the, of the brain's potential, 10% of the consciousness. So that means that if I could cultivate the other 90% that's uncultivated, then my thinking would be more profound, my thoughts would be more, 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 more intelligent, and I would instantly be more successful in my academic endeavors, my professional endeavors, and of course, uh, fulfillment is contingent upon achievement, and I would be a fulfilled individual. I think most people are frustrated because they are not fulfilled because they can't accomplish what they would like to do because they are limited by virtue of their thought potential. So that sort of led me into the whole field of, of uh, consciousness. What is consciousness? What is thought? Mm -hmm. as, as to what is a thought? And I said, All right. I want, to go, I want to go right there, but I, I need to take a quick break. So if you could hold for me, let me just take a quick break and come to talk about what is consciousness.
197.4 million on the Anato Bay Coastal Protection Project for which a contract will be signed on Monday, April 15. The money will be invested by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund through funding from the World Bank's Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project and will be used under, to undertake the protection works in Anato Bay, St. Mary. It is not bad news. We had a similar report coming out of Westmoreland a few years ago. I'd even gone down to Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, uh, to look at the areas that were going to be uh, included in all this monies, uh, the spending of these monies that were dispensed by the World Bank and other places and so on. And uh, what happened to that? What happened to that? We have to follow some money. There's a lot of monies out there that we need to follow. What happened to the money that was announced? What happened? What happened? What happened? We have to all sorts. And this is no, there's no connection, but we have to talk about illicit um, enrichment. We have to talk about nothings. Anyway, uh, my final guest for this morning uh, is Professor Anne Bailey, writer, historian, and a professor of history. She is joining me on the phone lines and oops let me just get this right uh joining me on the phone lines uh to talk about the uk church that is scheduled to uh officially apologize for the involvement of the church definitively and broadly speaking uh, in uh, in slavery so there's a whole lot happening with that, and uh, we want to hear from Professor Anne Bailey what the situation is, because I understand that the a delegation had gone into into the UK on this mission, and uh, that there is a situation now on the island in Jamaica where members of the various denominations in the UK are actually here um, to make this apology. I'm not quite sure what it entails altogether. So Professor Anne Bailey, who I'm very, very happy to welcome to the space again. Uh, <laughs> it's out of the, Professor, ba- how are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. Uh, yeah. Great to be here. Great to be here. Good to have you in the space uh-huh. again. I'm glad that we uh-huh. meet up. Now I have your number again. I'm not going to lose it. So, Please. yes, yeah, so here, we are. here we are. Um, so lots happening behind the scenes. Um, even though we did report on the delegation leaving to the UK. So first of all, yes. tell me, how did this come about? Um, the idea of the church apologizing, you know, how, how, how did that come about? How did that come to oh, be? Well, there are several elements to it. So in general, the bigger, issue is the issue of reparations for slavery and for anybody who is listening who is not sure exactly what that is um, although there's growing awareness um, people of African descent in Jamaica in the Caribbean, in America and also in Brazil and Central America Mm -hmm. but speaking of Jamaica worked for hundreds of years labored for free. Mm -hmm. And when slavery was abolished because of their own pushing for that abolition and their resistance in the 1830s, Mm -hmm. um, the slave owners, the British slave owners were compensated for every enslaved person that they gave their freedom to. Mm -hmm. So if you can understand this, the British slave owner who enslaved the black person received compensation Mm -hmm. for letting them be free, for agreeing with Parliament that they must be free. Mm -hmm. But the enslaved person received zero. That means nothing, absolutely nothing. So they received 20 million in total, 20 million pounds. And that is way back when, right? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what that is in today's terms. Mm -hmm. And now people of African descent who are enslaved received nothing, zero. Mm-hmm. So that is the core of the reparations argument, that that was obviously a great injustice. Mm-hmm. And the reparations argument says that people of African descent should have received, and because we did not receive, we are a bit struggling against kind of, you know, it's kind of like a one-foot race, you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. we are 
so many yards behind Mm -hmm. and we're also not able to be able to build up our country the way we want to. Mm -hmm. So what does that have to do with churches? Churches, including some church reverends and so forth, were part of some of the people who received that money, (laughs) you see? And churches were involved. Several mainline churches were involved. Church of England, Church of Scotland were involved in slavery. In in other words, they themselves were enslavers. Absolutely. They are on three levels. Some of them, of course, it's not everybody. Some Mm -hmm. of them were enslavers. Some of them were also investing. Some of the churches themselves were also investing in the trade. So even if they were not owning plantations, they invested in the slave trade. Mm -hmm. So they were involved in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the church has done many, many good things too. So let me just say that very carefully. Mm -hmm. And they were also, some of them were very much involved in abolitionism, but they were also involved in slavery. So this church now is coming to make an apology for all of that. All right. The other, recently, we saw the Anglican Church came out, the Church of England, and made a statement and said they were giving monies into a fund that would, um, it was reading and looking like reparations, but when you, you pull it apart, it really um, wasn't. And uh, so, so how is that connected to, if at all, connected to what we saw coming from the Church of England? Good question. So it is actually the, you, you know, different because there are these different churches, and as some of your guests may know, you know, there was a lot of infighting, not infighting, but rivalries mm-hmm, <laughs> in mm-hmm. and amongst the different churches. Yes. So they know, then as know, they also are doing different things. Mm-hmm. So there are different levels. Some of the different churches are at different levels of addressing this issue of repair. Some have not really addressed it. Some are talking about it. Some have mm-hmm. done something. Mm-hmm. The one that has done something is the United Reformed Church, and they're the ones that have two almost two years ago gave um, an official, they already did an official apology, but not in the Caribbean, if you will. Mm-hmm. And they put aside certain millions, I think it's about 10 million pounds, mm-hmm. that they have said that they are contributing towards the reparations cause. None of that has been spent yet, so none of that has, they're organizing a, a kind of, they're trying to figure out what is the best tool to use, right, mm-hmm. to be able to, to, to give those their reparations. But they at least, which is very commendable, have done something. Mm-hmm. And so we have representatives mm-hmm. here today, and hopefully people will come to that service. Mm-hmm. And as I said, it, it, it is a formal apology. Is yeah. forthcoming. Are, we to be, mm-hmm. are we to be satisfied with these these drip, drip, though? Um, for I understand. Billing? I, I hear you. Mm-hmm. And then back, back to your question about the Church of England. So they have made these pledges, but I think, and uh, again, for everybody listening and certainly for the great work that you do with your show, can I commend you how long you've been doing this? It's so important. Thank you. Yeah. Really, I'm so critical. And you're, and many of your listeners I know are also to committee to issues. We really have to put the pressure on. So when people say they're making pledges, we all know that you can make a pledge, what it was, I think the latest pledge with the Amazon Church was like a hundred million. I think they were talking about doing more. But you know, those, it can be empty unless we are the ones that are really, um, kind of putting our foot to the pedal, if you will, mm-hmm. and saying, look, these are our needs. And so our organization, Churches Reparations Action Forum, of which I'm one of the principals. Mm -hmm. We are saying, look, we think we're one vehicle. There are certainly other vehicles through which we can give you an action plan. Mm -hmm. You see? So it's not just a pledge, an empty pledge. But we can be talking about what we want. Freedom schools, that's one of the number one things we want. Mm -hmm. And the kind of programming that you do every week, every day, let me just say, that is what the freedom schools would be about. Okay. You understand? So that that is what it would be about. All right. So how did this? Because uh, I know Jamaica and 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 the churches on the island and the, the group that you belong to were integral right. in uh, in making that. Um, there was a delegation that went to the UK, and here we right. have a kind of a reciprocity. So uh, exactly. explain to us what happened. Mm-hmm. Well, we um, churches reparations action forum craft for sure. Group of seven principals, most of them are church leaders, head, you know, former head of the Baptist Union, Dr. Stephen Jennings, and so forth and so forth, um, and others who are involved in um, either as lay people like myself, I'm a lay person, but I'm a historian of slavery, mm-hmm. and so I'm a resource person to them, but also as a Christian, somebody who really believes that Christianity as an institution 
have something to repent for. You know, mm-hmm. that you have to get that straight. You have to be you have to be honest about your past. Mm-hmm. So we went as a group to England in uh, I think it was last summer and met with a number of these same leaders who we are meeting with now and others. We also met with Parliament. We were privileged to have an opportunity to meet with some of the black parliamentarians who, by the way, are under a whole lot of pressure, mm-hmm. like Diane Abbott. Of course, I, yes. I asked, I don't know if you have interviewed her I've, lately, but yeah, I... I've, 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 done, I've done a few programs on oh. the situation here on the island. Yeah. I've, I've interviewed oh. her myself, but yes, we have been seriously um, engaged in ensuring that something is done. It's still n- not dealt with properly, especially exactly. on the island of Jamaica. Um, exactly. So maybe maybe now we'll hear something from a church, because I think the church should get involved in this on a very, very I serious agree. level. Yes. I agree. She, I mean, represented, um, um, Diane Abbott has been the standard bearer for black people in the yes. UK for decades. And now mm-hmm. they're really, where to be. she's probably not long for retirement. And at this time, giving her so much pressure yes. for spending, I mean, all kinds of nonsense. Anyway, we yeah. met with them mm-hmm. and they have been championing reparations. And that's part of it. They're mm-hmm. under a lot of pressure. So mm-hmm. we went to give them support, but also to find out from other bodies, church bodies, what they might be willing to do. So we met with the Quakers, we met with, with the Anglicans, the Church of England at Lambeth Palace and so forth. And so now this is a reciprocal visit. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I said, we are focusing on action and we want everyone to know that mm-hmm. we are not, we're all people of action. Yes, <laughs> we're yes. not we're not talkers, you know, in yeah. our everyday in, life. In, in Africa, in, in, in Ghana, in our way of thinking, there's no alienation between speaking and doing. So we Thank speak it you. and we do it. So, so, so That's right. Let me ask That's you this. Right. Do you, yes. are you, so to, to what extent are you, is a group connected to what's being done c- coming out of the, um, National. the National Council for Reparations and the Reparations um, uh, uh, Research Center at UWE and, and other reparations um, uh, organizations like CARICOM and so on? Excellent. So we should say, like, we should say CRAF, first of all, two of the members of, our, of CRAF are actually on the National Reparations Council. So that's a, mm-hmm. already a, a nice tie-in. Mm-hmm. They represent the church on okay. that National Council. Okay. Okay. And so they were encouraged, you know, to say, yes, let us go deeper mm-hmm. in this kind of, um, you know, connected um, entity to go deeper into the issue of churches and reparations. So that's mm-hmm. one thing. Mm-hmm. The other thing is in terms of the Center for Reparations, which is another excellent place I just want to big up um, Sir Hilary Beckles and Dr. Vereen Shepherd. I mean, we're, these are treasures. These of are national, course. international of treasures. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so grateful. As a slavery scholar myself, I've benefited from their work. And I'm mm-hmm. just so grateful that they have been advocating for such a long time. Yes. So we have connected with them, our group craft, and we brought the church leaders to connect with Sir Hilary Beckles mm-hmm. just this past week. Uh, so w- this is the way we see it. Yes. It took a thousand how do I put it, a thousand pieces of light Mm. to end slavery. Mm -hmm. It took a thousand, a thousand beams of light in terms of the abolitionist movement. That's what it took, Cabo. That's what it took. So it took all these different individual and group advocacy all over the place from one side of the Atlantic to the other Mm -hmm. to end that crime against humanity. Mm -hmm. It is going to also take a number of advocacy groups to end, not only to end the legacy, but now to build mm-hmm. something with I do agree with you. reparations. I do, I do agree with you. And one of the things we talk about in this space all the time is leaderfulness, because we have to do it from where we are. What do you have in your hand? Use That's it. Right. It's basically That's right. what it is. Exactly. So, so, exactly. What will be, so what will be happening um, from these groups who are on the island? It, it, do we go beyond rep- um, apology? What after apology? Oh, yes. We have given them, just for our, for craft, from the position of craft, a seven-point plan. And that is on anyone who wants to find us on, on the internet where they are findable. And it shows our seven-point plan. Our seven-point plan is at the top of it is freedom schools, is education. We have some wonderful, mighty institutions, as you know. And by the way, we took them to Excelsior as an example, which is doing a wonderful job. Yes. So, But we don't have enough of these Excelsiors and Immaculates and so forth and so forth. We just don't have enough. So we want to 
create more schools of that caliber, mm-hmm. but also give a focus to this history to make sure that every single student that comes out of that institution knows the shoulders on which they're standing, understands also what their job is in the present, you know, mm-hmm. what their contribution has to be to building up Jamaica. So that's number one. We also have number two, the environment. We want to distribute some land. Some of these churches have land. Mm-hmm. That they're just sitting on, yes. ah, ha, 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 ha. Mm, and people. We, I'm sorry, you know the, the statistics about some of us who are landless. Mm-hmm. Why is this? How does that work? Mm-hmm. So again, there are commitments that we are interested in making, and we are encouraging others to make in some redistribution of land that is just sitting there and mm-hmm. nobody. When people have a need, we're also considering issues like so. There's the environment. There's there's, there's education. We're considering mental health issues. That's another major area for us where we want to really encourage efforts on that level. So if people go on online, they can see that we are really about getting things done. How do done. we find we you? How do we find you online? Online, it is. I want to. I'm going to have to follow up with you because right, my that's internet fine. is not working right right now. We right, just that's fine. But yeah. it is churches reparation. Reparations Action Forum. Churches Reparations Action Forum. So and we can, in the Google meantime, search. we can Google that and, 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 and see where it Please. takes us. But also to say, because Please. we're totally out of time, uh, Professor Anne mm-hmm. um, to say, so today, what's, is there anything happening today? Where can um, Jamaicans go to see some of these apologies in action and conversations in action? How can yes. we participate? Yes, there is a church service happening today. Mm-hmm. And once again, we're going to give that to you so that you can let, you know, at Webster, mm-hmm. um, we're going to give that information to you on how to, how to, you know, it's, we expect it to be very widely attended by yeah. um, all different folks of different strata of society. Mm-hmm. And it's happening, I think, about six o'clock, but I'm going to get that information to that's you so that evening? you can maybe advertise, yes, oh yes, this evening. Mm-hmm. That's when this kind of, Again, they have already committed this this funding, but this is the formal apology here mm-hmm. in the Caribbean, the scene of the crime, so to yes, speak. And yes. we just want to commend them, the United Reform Church. We want to commend them and any others who are these are these are people. Can I say this? Who you know, all of us have sinned. There's no, <laughs> you know, no no one no one. You know, what is the song that Stephen Marley sings? Beautiful song. You know, who you know who hasn't sinned? You know, who's going to cast the first stone? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, beautiful song. And I really want to say that that we understand that nobody, you know, in this world can say that they have never done wrong. But the important thing is, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And these people, these people, these representatives from these churches are here to do something about it. And we want to give them a lot of big up. All and right. Thanks. We'll definitely be following up on this mm-hmm. and, um, and and hope to talk to you again because this process looks like it's ongoing, like the, the seven-point plan and so on, and we'll have a further discussion on this. But let's keep in touch on this, uh, Professor Ann Bailey, because I really oh. want to get um, our, our listeners involved in this process and also to see how this how this pans out i think this is movement and and it's positive movement but we still have to hold people responsible it can't just be apologies and then no, you go on not. You know. oh not at all i do hope that you will follow this through with us yes, and we'll kind do. of shadow us and 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 keep the feet to the fire so that we're talking something very specific and concrete we'll in do. the months and years to come. <laughs> thank you so much, my sister. And thank you for the work you do. Thank you for the weeping oh. time and all oh, that com- that welcome. came with that. You, your work oh. is, is really phenomenal. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you so much. All you right. take care now. You too. Professor Anne Bailey, the writer, historian, and a professor of history. To say that our brother and Rastafari Eldon Jabem has been, um, you know, writing to us about this and uh, has sent out a message that I want to to read in this space before we go. Our brother and Rastafari Elder Ras Congovince Marka Thomas of the Ancient Nabingi Order transition on Thursday, April 11, 2024, in Ghana and is now among our ancestors. Uh, uh, Jabem says Congo Marcos trod to the motherland via Guyana, Latin America and Brazil, enduring much tribulation and his repatriation journey to reach uh, 
Ghana. Jabem and all of Rastafari is forever grateful for Maka's work and contribution to the struggle for liberation of the descendants of enslaved Africans as one of the keeper, keepers of the Rastafari faith and protectors of the sacred space known as Sugarloaf Mountain, Lion's Den and uh, Bob Marley Beach, the birthplace of the first Nyabingi Tabernacle and a place of refuge for Rastafari fleeing persecution from state-sponsored terrorism. Kongamaka stood resolute in the face of the system of oppression which tried to displace our Rastafari family and Jamaicans from the Bob Marley Beach and to destroy our heritage and sacred space. With this courage and that of his family, and I prevailed to keep and continue the protection of Bob Marley Beach for all Jamaicans. May your light continue to shine for equal rights and justice, Congo Maka. Rastafari from Jabem. And to the family and colleagues and brethren and the house of Nyabingi of Congo Maka, our deepest condolences. We're sending you love and light in this, your time of greatest need. May his journey into the Ipit Aisut be peaceful. Ashe, Ashe. Asheo. Uh, we're seeing Nicaragua urging top UN court to halt German military aid to Israel because of Israel's genocide in Gaza. And, uh, we're seeing in, uh, uh, in the Caribbean waters and South American waters, we're seeing where there are scuffles again with Guyana and Venezuela, but we'll be paying some attention to that. Also, CARICOM, uh, has put out, uh, Press release saying that the transition uh, or transit transition council is ready in uh, uh, in IT. We're paying some attention to that. The Asian people don't want that, but we're paying some attention to that, and we'll tell you how it goes. So, so much to watch. Thank you so much for being a part of the program today. Thank you so much for your participation. Thanks to my very special guests uh, for coming in, for being on the phone lines and talking to us about issues concerning ourselves and our people. In the meantime, we keep on the fore burner, you know, on the front burner, the struggle and the advocacy to repeal all colonial laws on the books, to repeal and replace the Constitution, but urgently to repeal all colonial laws, including the Obia law, on the books. This is how we say goodbye. Thank you for listening. My name is Kabu, Kabu Ma'at Kiru. And uh, with me this morning, you've been hearing her. Uh, she was your first line before I came on. Ma- Andrina, Andrina Winter. Th- Andrina, thank you so much as we make way for the big A inside. Uh, Biggie, I thought you were on the cruise, ma'am. I was just no. waiting for... Okay, so you just well, give up cruise now? Okay, so it used to be your thing. No, I have been on the... Welcome to the... Welcome to Jam Rock. Jam Rock, yes, right. yes, yes. I've, I've been on this only once. Okay, only oh. once. <laughs> He's been, he's been on the, he's a jam or a cruise guy, but I've been on this only once. I bet you your cancer, you've been on this only once. Like, only once. As if. Anyway, so, uh, we make way for the big inside of this Sunday sunshine. Did you go to Carnival, by the way? Carnival. Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you're, you're, you're provoking me when you say that. Carnival. I know, what a provocation. You know, you know, mm. that's not my thing. Mm. Eh? That is not my thing. It's not your, it's not your thing. All right. So he, uh, so he didn't go to carnival. Uh, neither did I for that matter. Um, you know, Big A, just before I go, I saw a picture of, um, I think it's Bruce Golding's daughter with her daughter at carnival. There's a picture that was in the newspapers. And of course she was scantily dressed and we know what happens at carnival, right? So, you know, you have simulated sex, you have, uh, gyrations, you have actual sex, and uh, and so on. And the question that came to my mind is, should there be a discussion in Jamaica about whether or not young children should be allowed to attend carnival? 
Um, there, 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 there should be because there is a age limit, you could say, on on children in that song. The dance hall, the dance hall space. Are you, the children no, can't go. Ex- what, 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 what happens is that we don't experience a free for all dance hall experience. Yeah, we say dance hall, the dance hall um, street parade, no, a part of the, the the experience. But what, 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 what is distinct between dance hall and carnival as we know it? is that dance hall is normally in a confined space, whereas the carnival experience is is thrown wide open to, to all and sundry, mm-hmm. televised and, mm-hmm. and all of that. Mm-hmm. Now, in the dance hall space, because it is confined, you are able to have a age limit and some amount of control as to who goes in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you don't find children, by mm-hmm. and large, Mm-hmm. being exposed to mm-hmm. the quote-unquote vulgarity mm-hmm. of, of dance hall. Mm-hmm. However, in the carnival space, because mm-hmm. it is thrown wide open, mm-hmm. there, is no, there is no control. And mm-hmm. so um, everybody is exposed. Even young children. I'm, I'm very concerned right. about it. They're they, they in particular. Yeah, I mean, little girls... Because what I see, I mean, I used to go to carnival. I don't know if you remember that. I mean, I used to go to, I, I, we didn't love carnival. I mean, still love carnival. But, um, but I know that, it, I know today that, um, you have uh, sexual simulation mm-hmm. and sometimes real sex on, right. on the road and in spaces right. and, and people gyrating. And, and, and if you're with, say, your mom or your auntie as a, as a little girl, and I'm, because it's a free for all, you know. So any man will want to come wind up and you can't just come dagger you. No, yes, I said it worked. I don't agree. Big eight worked. No, 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 big eight, no, big eight. I am a carnival girl and not asking no, no, no question. Hold on, no man. Hold on, no. This, and, 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 and this is where I disagree. Yes. Um, Kashima and I had this conversation last week, Monday. And I personally believe mm-hmm. that a woman's space, her body, is, 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 um, her own, um, she's in control. And I agree with it. that, 100%. And, 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 and she should have some amount, not, not not some amount, she controls. Yeah, I understand. She should by, control. Right. But because of what Carnival has descended into. No. You have to turn on sometime and tell a man, say, look your man, no, but, biggie, but, but, I'm a no, woman, no, you know. No, no. That's why I miss up Carnival, you know. No. Because I may have to turn on all the time and say, hello. No, no, fine. And And, and, and if we had a thousand of you protesting. That's the point I'm making. If we have a thousand of you protesting, then you would find that the the, the, the men and all those who, who who believe that they then can, can just wind up and, up and, you. and dagger you, then they would have um, some amount of, of... But while we don't have it, Big A, while we don't have 100 of me as so, while the women are not but raising but their voices against it... Like Right? Why is this not not the not the not the preferred mode of, of operation? But you know, if you take me out of context, do you know? Because I agree with what you're saying. Right. The, the, what I was saying is that because the situation exists today, mm-hmm. where that is the current situation, this is not a space to carry children. No, it is not. I I, I personally I personally. Right. Agree. So that's what the point I was making. No, no one. No, mm-hmm. I, I I personally agree that. Um, however, there are persons who believe. That you know the world is now just thrown wide open and everybody is liberal and the, the and children, idea, but the they children can't, go up the children go and learn a new way. So why not? Why not? <laughs> why, why not? Well, I know uh, I see a little lady from my university. Why, Good morning, why not, Andrew. Why, why, why not? No, kind of a kind of a thing. I see yeah, a little lady from my university. So I think Andrew Seni can give me who is who is now in the walls of academia talking about the the um. There needs to be different a different paradigm when you look when you when you're discussing pedophilia, for example, and that pedophilia is a sexual um, choice. This is the discussion that's happening now in some of the European oh, university yes, spaces. Yes, yes, yes. There are per, there are persons you now who who are who are advocates of pedophilia, but not in our space, not 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 on our watch. <laughs> no, not no, why not? No, yes, no, no, that we shouldn't protest. I'm just saying to you. That, that that part of the the, 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 the conversation you no know, is that 
you know, these kids are going to learn it anyway. These kids. Oh, you mean this is what it. people are saying? Yes. Boy, oh boy, yes. oh boy, we have to do something about you. Well, we are. Well, what we are going to have to do then is to shame each other, right. because if a state is not protecting the children. Then we have to start shaming the mother, the auntie, the father. We have to just literally, sh- if people have shame and conscience, just shame them and say, no, you don't, don't carry a child in that space. No matter who you are. And I'm not talking to one person because I, I mentioned somebody just now and it was just, um, that was just a picture. I don't have any, I don't have any context on that. I don't know where the little child was. I don't know if that child even went to the carnival. It was just a picture. But the point I'm making is that because I saw that child, it had me thinking that um children shouldn't be in this space and in a costume too and sexualized and i'm talking this child either. i'm talking about other children Mm-mm. in this space yeah, sexualized in costumes this, but listen, you know you probably wonder where's the genesis of all this because you 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 do see parents on a normal day dressing up their children scant, I mean, scantily clad, having them walking up and down in a watch areas, having them in makeup, sexualizing But them. if the masses are the Jamaican people doing it is one thing, but these people, these right. uptown people who are going to carnival, you them to set an example, you understand? And I'm not making no excuse for the masses of the Jamaican people who are hustling along the road. I'm just saying that certain things, you know, expect from certain spaces, and this is what, what this has devolved into. This carnival space has devolved into something. We used to go carnival. I refer did a lot of truck in a carnival. And then something that we used so to... So gay festival. Stop it. <laughs> but, we, you know, but, you know, we used to go carnival. We used to walk the carnival line. Angola, Barbados, Spring Garden are coming. You know, and then something there. You know, it, it has to... And then we see this youth come from England now. Kai Senant. Um, with his team, he's on social media. He has a massive following. I mean, a massive following on TikTok. But this is a part of the culture that he clocked into. The fact that you can't get a woman for dagger. Mm-hmm. A dad, a dad, you sell back to the world. I mean, I blame him because a dad can't even sell. Anyway, we take over too much time here. I'm so sorry, Biggie. <laughs> no, I'm so that. sorry. Wonderful. You know, um, high but, quality conversation. All the time. Yeah, um, somebody, you know, because you know, anyway, but may I tell you off here where somebody said, "May you need for the?" So and, no, let me say it on here just in case people go mistake me. Right. Right. So we need to do our our little talk in an, in another space. I've heard it all the time. Yeah, well, I've heard it all the time. There in you fact, go. I told you earlier yeah. on um, this week that there is a gentleman, big up Fila, right? Who, um, yes, right, yes, is, we, we call him Fila, very popular Fila, like. gentleman in Ochoa's. Okay, and, um, big up Fila. He, he, he is not only a fan of yours, he loves the conversation we have um. when we, are, we are handing over, right? Mm. He has his own social issues that he wants to share with you too. Because, mm. um, you know, when you were campaigning about the beach issue the other day, check, 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 check. But I will check on the air. Hello. I will check so loud. I mean, I understand the check. Where did the check come from? What? Is it from the ship? Yeah, probably. Okay. Sorry. So, yeah. did, you, did you link with your, your harmonizers this morning? I linked with them and it is beautiful. So, maybe I'm them for coming now. What time is your link? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we're in the big game. Look here. Let me go. Let me, let, let us move. So, uh, do you want me to just go ahead and take the time signal then, big game? Because it is like, um. Well, 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 we, have, we have so much things to talk about. Let's yes. talk about it right after the break. Exactly. Then let me just take this break. Jamaica's top track and field. In this segment of the program, we're going to be talking with Dr. Yeshua Israel Baba. Uh, doctor of audiology, poet, musician, and author. During Baba's career, he was employed in academia, uh, clinical, uh, international, and in public school settings. After his retirement, he embarked on an intense spiritual odyssey born out of an innate identification with Judaism and the Jewish culture. He has traveled extensively throughout Israel and visited several historical and biblical landmarks. We're standing by to join him. He enjoys reading and asking questions and has read the Zohar, the Prike Avot, and the Guide for the Perplex, um, Rebbe, and several of the contemporary Kabbalistic authors, including Yehuda Ashlags Baal Asulam. He is a student of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, 
who was uh who has celebrated Rosh Hashanah given that Dhaka and prayed the Tikon Hakalai in Uman in Ukraine and um he has also visited Beit Israel Jewish synagogue in, synagogue in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and spent 2018 Hanukkah in the holy city of Sfat in Israel. Sfat. He's a student of the Torah and the Hebrew alphabet as a technology of consciousness. He understands the letters of the Hebrew alphabet to be profound um, and spiritual. Uh, he's also a skilled pianist, a vocalist, and a composer. He has written, arranged, and produced um, uh, compact discs. He is a contributing writer for the Monthly Reported, a local community newspaper, and hosts his weekly radio broadcast entitled Shima Israel. And um, Dr. Israel has lived and worked in several countries, including India, Australia, Africa, the South Pacific Island of Guam, and more, uh, much more about him. But we're going to go to the phone lines. Uh, let me know if you have Dr. Yeshua uh, Ben uh, Yisrael on the phone lines. We have just a few minutes with him. Uh, Baba Yeshua Yisrael. Not quite sure what's happening there, but we're standing by for him uh, on the phone lines. No, we're not getting him. Let me see what's happening. All right, so we hear that we are not getting to Baba. Can we go to our next guest if she's available? All right, so let me see, Anne, if you're listening, Dr. Anne, Professor Anne Bailey, if you're listening, uh, we're going to go straight to you if you don't mind. Professor Anne Bailey is a writer and historian, a professor of history at SUNY uh, Binghamton, and in her work, she combines the elements of travel, adventure, history, and an understanding of contemporary issues with an accessible style. She's been on this program before, you know. Her newest book is called The Weeping Time, Memory and the Largest Slave Auction in American History. It was published by Cambridge University Press. As a matter of fact, it is through this book that I learned so much Um very happy to see this book out from Dr. from Professor Anne Bailey. But we want to talk to her about the UK church bringing an official apology for involvement in slavery uh, to Jamaica. And uh, I think they're already here on the island and might be doing something today. So we want to talk to Professor Anne Bailey if she's available. And then we can still try for Baba Yeshua Ben Yisrael. At six minutes after nine o'clock. At 9.20, we go live to what it is. Um, what I said earlier is that I'm seeing a report from a very credible journalist out of Israel who has said, and also picked up by other journalists from um, the region, who have said that the is the um, Temple Institute that they have now made a request to the Israeli um, police for permission to carry knives and other implements to uh, do this sacrifice, to do this ritual is what they're calling it at um, uh, on the altar in uh, Mount Olives or, or wherever they're going to do it. So there is something there. <laughs> 